welcome to the regular meeting held on Wednesday, April 11, 2018 at 6 o'clock p.m. Can we have a roll call, please? Freeholder Graham. Here. Freeholder Lazaro. Here. Freeholder Patillo. Here. Freeholder Director Rose. Present. Freeholder Yardley. Here. Can I have a moment of silence to the flag? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, P.L. 1975, adequate notice is required by Section 3D of Chapter 231, P.L. 1975, has been made by regular mail. Such notice being submitted on April 6, 2018, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, New Jersey, to the following. New Jersey Herald, New Jersey Sunday Herald, Star Ledger, WSUS Radio, the NNJ Radio. It's also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for the public announcements. It has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. And I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion by Attilo. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? You guys have it. The uh, agenda is approved. Resolution regarding prior pro providing for an executive closed session not open to the public in accordance with provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4 12 at SEC. Whereas the subject matter is about to be discussed may be excluded from the public portion of the meeting by resolution of the Board of Chosen Freeholders as an exception to the quote Open P Public Meetings Act end quote pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 2 B. And whereas it appears necessary for the Board of Chosen Freeholders to discuss such matters in executive session. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex, in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4 12 B and NJSA 10 colon 4 13, that the Board at this time enter into an executive session in which the public shall be excluded and be it further resolved that the general nature of the subjects to be discussed relate to the following items authorized by NJSA 10 colon 4 12 B as designated below. 7. Matters related to litigation negotiations and attorney client privilege, specifically CWA 1032, CWA 1032 supervisor, CWA 1032 social services. PBA 10, uh, 138 Sheriff's Unit contracts. Be are further resolved that the deliberations conducted in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders or provided by law that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality and be it further resolved that upon completion of the business for which the board has entered into the executive session, the board shall reconvene and resume its meeting open to the public. I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lazaro. Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. Freeholder Yardley. Yes. Certificates presentations. Proclamations. I'll just go through all these. We'll vote on it and then we'll give the presentations out. Proclamation. One. Proclamation and recognition of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Two. Proclamation and recognition of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Three. Proclamation and recognition of April as Organ and Tissue Donor Awareness. Four. Proclamation and recognition of April 13th as Wear Purple for Alcohol Awareness. Five. Proclamation and recognition of Sussex Tech Schools, Technical Schools, Mustangs Bowling Team. Six. Proclamation and recognition of Crime Victims Crime Week. Seven proclamation recognition of Eagle Scout Brian Hewitt and Kevin Saar. Can I have a motion? I'll make it. Section by Yardley. Section by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Those opposed? The ayes have it. Proclamations are passed. Uh, could uh, Ms. Patillo please give the proclamation in recognition of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month? Yes, go ahead. Hey, would you like to speak a little before I call on you? Well, I just wanted to um, thank the uh, Chosen Board of Freeholders. Uh, on behalf of Daisy, we uh, express gratitude for your support um, in helping uh, the survivors of both uh, 
domestic and sexual violence in our community. So thank you uh, for your support. Yeah, Daisy has always been uh, such a, a great help, and um, you've worked so closely with this situation for so many years. And I know people um, from my area that have problems and have used your facility and your organization, and the compassion and kindness that you bring to what you do is greatly appreciated. And your efforts in this particular type of a, of a situation with a sexual assault that affects families and, and all, everybody um, is so important. And we really appreciate that you give so much time uh, to bring awareness to education and to help those that are in need in emergency situations always being there. And I want to thank people that give to Daisy as well. There's a lot of people in a lot of organizations, I know the women's clubs, uh, that make sure that this is one of the organizations that they give and support all the time because of the great work that you do. Greatly needed, and thank you. So it's my pleasure to read this. Thank you. Whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month is intended to draw attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and impacts every community member of Sussex County. And whereas sexual assault affects women, children, and men of all racial, cultural, and economic backgrounds. And whereas in addition to the immediate physical and emotional course, sexual assault may also have associated consequences of post-traumatic stress disorder, substance abuse, depression, homelessness, eating disorders, and suicide. And whereas sexual assault can be devastating for not only the survivor, but also for the family and friends of the survivor. And whereas no one person, organization, agency, or community can eliminate sexual assault on their own, but we can work together to educate our entire population about what can be done to prevent sexual assault, support survivors and their significant others, and increase support for agencies providing services to survivors. And whereas domestic abuse and sexual assault intervention services will join with other sexual assault service providers across the state of New Jersey and the nation in public awareness initiatives intended to generate greater public understanding of the issues surrounding sexual violence. And whereas the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders strongly supports the efforts of national, state, and local partners and of every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts to prevent sexual violence. And whereas we can all use our voices to change the culture to prevent sexual violence, prevention requires addressing the root causes and social norms that allow sexual violence to exist. Now therefore be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders join communities across the country in playing an active role to prevent sexual violence Along with the United States government and state of New Jersey, we do hereby proclaim April 2018 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month by order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Jonathan Rose, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Batillo, Deputy Freeholder, George F. Graham, Freeholder, Herbert Gandhi, Freeholder, and Carl Lazaro, Freeholder. Thank you so much. Having um, an event, um, actually in coordination with our community partners, uh, Jimmy's House and uh, Sussex County Prosecutor's Office, on April 25th, uh, down on the town uh, square here in the, in the clothesline project. So come out and join us. Um, and if you could make it, I'd love for you to come read the proc proclamation. Okay. Okay. And the information is right there. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> Over this way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just hold the clock. Wait a minute. She's going to show it. Shake this. Give it another one. Sorry. Do you want to take the time for that? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so the time for the program is April 25th at 1230 at Newton Town Green, the Clothesline Project. So be in touch if any of you can make it. That would be great. Okay, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we have Freeholder Darkly uh, give the proclamation recognition of April Child Sorry. Abuse Prevention Month. Okay. Christy. Yes. Uh, 
you like to take? Sure. Um, so I just, again, would like to uh, thank the Board of Children and Stakeholders for your support um, for our young victims um, of child abuse physical and uh, sexual abuse as well as neglect. Um, so it's with the support of the community we can provide at Jenny's house a comfortable and safe place for a child to tell their story. So your support is thank you. Whereas child abuse and neglect is a complex and ongoing problem in our society affecting many children in Sussex County and whereas every child is entitled to be loved cared for, nurtured, feel secure, and be free from verbal, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse and neglect. And whereas child abuse and neglect not only directly harm children, but also increase the likelihood of criminal behavior. Substance abuse, health problems, and risky behavior. Whereas the effect of child abuse are felt by communities as a whole and need to be addressed by the entire community. And whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among families, social service agencies, schools, religious and civic organizations, law enforcement <coughs> agencies, and the business community. Now therefore, be it resolved that Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders do hereby <coughs> proclaim April Eight, uh, 2018 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and calls upon all of its citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, and businesses to increase their participation in our effort to support the families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. By the order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Auxiliary members. That's Mary Waller and Linda Skellinger, Skellinger who is uh, president of our auxiliary. Can we have them come up? With the yes. Uh -huh. Would you come up? Thank you all for the proclamation. We appreciate it. It's a very important, like, like these other proclamations are. We really appreciate it. Um, I guess I actually should have you say something after I read this. No. Okay? Well. Or would you like to say something now? No, go okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> I've let everybody know I've been a donor for, I'm pretty old now, but since I was very young and uh, I think it's very, something very, very important. Whereas the transplantation of organs and tissues is a miracle of modern medicine and made possible through thoughtful <coughs> through the thoughtful compassion of organ and tissue donors, enabling surgeons to save thousands of lives each year, and donors not only the gift of life, but often restore health and sight to the recipients of the tissue and organs. And whereas there exists an increased need for organ and tissue donors in New Jersey and all throughout the United States, with an actual waiting list of 5,000 people in New Jersey and 110,000 people in nationwide. In Sussex County, there are 49 people on the waiting list as of today. One person, one person's organ can save eight lives, <coughs> and one person can enhance over 75 lives with tissue donation. 20 people die daily waiting for organ transplant. Whereas, through the National Organ and Tissue Donor Awareness Week, April 15th to the 21st, 2018, we are asking every citizen to support this vital effort by learning more about donating tissue and organs, filling out uniform donor cards, and making their families aware of their wishes, thus giving the precious gift 
of health, sight, and life to persons in need, that therefore be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders do hereby declare April 15th to the 21st, 2018 as Organ and Tissue Donor Awareness Week in Sussex County and <clears throat> furthermore do encourage all residents of the county to recognize life-saving and restorative benefits of tissue and organ <coughs> transplantation, transplantation as well as the great need for every capable person to become a donor by the board or <coughs> by the order of the board of chosen freeholders thank you thank you Everybody should have a pen. Yeah. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Okay. Do you want to read that? Yeah. Okay. There it is. And as this says, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. Mm -hmm. So that was anonymous, uh, just in that. But this is from the Sharing Network. They support us 100% and they help us. We're going to have a table up at the Newton Medical Center in the lobby uh, all week next week uh, that we give out awareness uh, materials for people that are not really aware of uh, this donor uh, project okay and uh, we really as you can see need as many as we can get as the very statistics. important yes right and I agree it's very important this is very important and hopefully when you go and do that license, or you can even go online and then you can go online and change your license. Mm -hmm. um, Whatever. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to help a lot of people. Thanks so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fiction. Fiction. You want to know some fiction girls? Girls. 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 <laughs> How do you want to do this? Okay. <laughs> 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 I don't know, in the back here. There you go. That's good. Yeah. People are all the talk. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so my husband's taking a picture. Is he done too? Okay. <laughs> now, uh, Freeholder, Freeholder Lazaro, can you please uh, give the proclamation and recognition of April 13th as Wear Purple Day for Alcohol Awareness? <laughs> it's very interesting you should uh, listen carefully to this because there's some facts and figures in here that are very surprising whereas alcohol is the most commonly used addictive substance in the United States and whereas one in every 12 adults suffers from alcohol abuse or dependence and more than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism or problem drinking. And whereas 100,000 persons, 100,000 persons die each year from alcohol-related causes, drunk driving, other accidents, falls, fires, alcohol-related homicides and suicides. And whereas teens who start drinking before the age of 14 are seven times more likely to develop alcohol problems by the time they are 21. 14-7-21. And whereas the month of April has been recognized as Alcohol Awareness Month by NICAD, the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, the founder and sponsor of Alcohol Awareness Month. And whereas the color that NICAD uses is purple violet family, a color that is similar to the amethyst. Here's the reasoning behind the amethyst color that amethyst is the most beautiful and valuable form of quartz. The word amethyst stems from the Greek word meaning without drunkenness. For in ancient times it was believed that anyone carrying or wearing this stone could not become intoxicated. Tell that to the police. <laughs> anyone who displays the amethyst color announces that they know someone whose life has been improved through alcoholism treatment. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of Sussex County do hereby proclaim that Friday, April 21st, 2018, as Wear Purple Day, by order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Jonathan Rolls, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Director, George Graham, Freeholder, Herb Yardley, Freeholder, and Carlos Zaro, Freeholder. 
I, I've been involved in, in addiction for many, many years, and alcohol is probably the most difficult addiction to get over because it's readily available and nobody has a problem. And that's the biggest problem. It's, I don't really have a problem. I can control it. I can stop anytime I want. I can last for a day, two days, three days a week, but then it's back on again. It's a, an, an insidious illness. And uh, uh, we're happy to recognize this and, and recognize you for the work that you do. We do appreciate it very much. And if I had known in advance, I would have worn purple. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, uh, it is the third year rose, in a row that you've Rose and blue this. is blending in good. <laughs> But congratulations. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Your Just want to thank you yes, for all your support with the Municipal Lines program as well as all of our substance abuse programs that we do. And this is Debbie from our Action Municipal Alliance, who Municipal Alliances do a lot of work in this county for prevention. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a thorn surrounded a thorn by two roses. Your <laughs> Do you want to consider yourself a thorn? <laughs> 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 to you, I'm a thorn. <laughs> How many people are here tonight for the bowling team? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This is a successful group of youngsters, but what's even greater is the group of parents and adults that followed them and supported them all along the way. Get up here. Yeah. He, uh, I don't know how many of you were here earlier, but they tried to do a, uh, a usurpation of the Freehold Abortion to take over up there. <laughs> I got all these photos shifted back to me. Your seat's very comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you interested? Very comfortable. Hey. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're part of us. The humility yeah, is <laughs> devastating. <laughs> He's a chief cook. Chief cook and pot wash. That's right, cook and pot wash. Now you gotta understand, this is the second year. Well, I'll read all this. Third. 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 Read the script. Read the script. Come on, Carl. We went over this. Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Come on, Carl. You have no idea the grief I've taken for three years. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully so. Yeah. I pay, pay, pay. I, I, went to, I went to the bowling matches. And one fact, uh, some of them, not all of them. Uh, but I went to one in Sparta, and I had to leave early for a fire call, and I fell down the steps. Oh. And went very straight down across everything, smashed up my knee. I sacrificed my body for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun to go and watch them. It's fun to watch their parents. It's fun to see the, the, the commitment, and, and when the 710 split, it's fun to watch them come back. <laughs> And to watch the redhead say, I can get that one. <laughs> and he does. He splits it right down the middle and miss both of them. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> Whereas, the Sussex County Technical School 2017-2018 Mustang Bowling Team has already been recognized as a Northwest Jersey winning team under head coach Chad Kosorek. Chad? Whereas this year's co-ed team accomplished num numerous victories which included first in the NJAC North Division for the third year. <laughs> Thank first you, place HWS tournament third year in a row and fourth overall. First place New Year's Eve tournament third year in a row. First place Falcon Free second year in a row. First place in Group 2 North 1B section tournament sixth year in a row after setting a school record with 3,294 pins. NJ TAC Tech Tournament recognizing four boy championships and three girl championships. 
Group two state championships for the third year in a row and ninth in the state finals. And whereas, never before in Mustang history as a team, never lost a single game out of 48 games bowled. Wow. That's pretty awesome. That's impressive. I think. Whereas, this winning streak led the Mustangs to win the state title on February 17, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders trust that the lessons learned from Coach Gasorik. <laughs> one frame, one game at a time, will echo through the discipline of being dedicated team players, which will continue to strengthen each young men and women, and be it further resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex wish the Sussex County Technical High School bowling team and Coach Gasor continued success, success, both on and off the bowling lanes. By order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Jonathan Rose, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Director, Director, George Graham, Freeholder, Herb Yardley, Freeholder, and Carl Lazaro, Freeholder. You've done a marvelous job. But more than a moment, you are a fine group of young men and women, and you have character, and that's what's really important out of all the stuff that you've done. And thank you, Mr. Gasorik, for your leadership and for nurturing these youngsters to being the kind of class people that they are. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Actually, I just want to thank the freeholders. Um, I want to thank my team. I want to thank all the parents. Um, you know, I say when we have our awards banquet or our awards uh, uh, assembly that this I definitely do not do alone. I have so much support from the parents, um, from uh, other teachers. Mr. Russo has always been there with me. Um, you know, and it's it's definitely a huge team effort. So there's other uh, gentlemen that I bowl with at the bowling alley who stand come in and help. Uh, Mr. Steele, Frank Steele. Uh, he's, he was uh, my uh, volunteer assistant this year. Dwight couldn't do it without uh, Dwight and his, you know, all of his. Uh, not how you support. Right. Yeah, it's it's how you the grandparents, <laughs> definitely the grandparents, could not do it without you guys. Uh, you guys really push us, and it's it's a real pleasure having you guys there. So, um, you know, and um, of course, you know the. Um, uh, our uh, superintendent, uh, Gus Modla, and Mr. Zakowitz, they couldn't be here tonight because they're actually at a, at a banquet for one of our other fellow classmates who is uh, uh, receiving a Scholar Athlete Award, uh, Olivia Walls, so they're over there doing that, otherwise they'd be here. So uh, it's definitely an, an all-out school effort, and um, you know we really appreciate it. The one thing I would like to add is that um, it just came out uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, that um, we are the number four team in the state out of all school. So we're doing wow. really well. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Good job, guys. Photo. Photo. Oh. Oh. Very Did you get your photo? Who needs his photo? Well, you want to Try to get it all together. Sure. Sure, go ahead. Take them all. I have to come in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the front. We're in the front again. We'll have to get this one. Thank you. 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 I'm trying to crop Carl out. Thank you, parents, for all your support. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Our conditions are not Hi. You're just too festive to part Um, do you want to speak first? Uh, I know. I think okay, we'll speak first. needs to get started. I'll just say something. Not too many people know about um, the Victim Assistance Unit in the Prosecutor's Office. What we do is assist victims through the criminal justice system. It's not easy for the lay person to understand what happens in criminal court. It's frustrating to victims at times, so that is what we do. It's not an easy job, um, but we do a very good job at doing it, and I love my job. It's one of the best jobs there is out there. Could you explain what you do? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> we help victims through the criminal justice system. Okay. Victims. <laughs> <laughs> I gave a shot. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a proclamation. <laughs> Usually I could talk a lot about our unit, but I'm not tonight. <laughs> okay. So, proclamation. Whereas we as a county recognize victims of crimes each year that affect individuals and communities, and reaching and serving all victims of crime is an essential to supporting communities because those who receive ser services support are more likely to remain invested in their communities. Many victims face barriers that keep them from accessing the services and, crimin and criminal justice systems that can help them recover from crime. National Crime Victims Rights Week provides an opportunity to recommit to ensuring that all victims of crime, especially those who are challenging to reach or to serve, are afforded their rights. Whereas the Office of Victims Victim of Witness Advocacy, located in Sussex County Prosecutor's Office, is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities. Our victim responders and working for justice for all victims and survivors. Now therefore be it resolved by the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders that the week of April 8th through 14th, 2018, be proclaimed as Sussex, Sussex County Crime Victims Rights Week by order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Jonathan Rose, Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Director, George Graham, Herb Yardley, and Carl Lazaro, Freeholders. I would also like to do a call out to a friend of mine who's dedicated much of his life to crime victims, and that is Rich Pompilium, uh, who has been the founder of New Jersey Crime Victims Law Center, and somebody who is uh, dedicated to the better part of probably the last 25 years to ensuring that, uh, that crime victims have their day. Uh, I also want, before I we take a picture here, we, we, there's an omission off of today's uh, proclamations that should have been on there, but we'll, we'll do it in the next meeting. And that is for Autism Awareness Week or Day, and also for Autism Awareness Month. Uh, this is something that we are very, very strongly uh, supportive of on the Freeholder Board. We usually get it in on the first meeting or the last meeting of March, and we, we, we get it in on the following meeting. But I would like everybody in this room to uh, to take a moment and uh, and understand the challenges, not of those who also ha have uh, autism challenges, but their families. So I would like to uh, thank you for coming up here. I'm sorry if I did. What? No. I was just looking at what your, what your no. title was. Oh, I'm the Victim Witness Coordinator, and go. I have two advocates that work with me, Laura Santita and Amy Rochette. Laura Santita works with the DV victims, and Amy does juveniles. Um, and we just do a great job with our victims. It's just, it's just a very rewarding job. Uh, we get yelled at a lot from victims because they get extremely frustrated. Uh, we are the liaisons between the victims and the assistant prosecutors in our office. Uh, we go to court with victims, and that's where I was this afternoon. I left Christie's meeting to go to court with a victim. We had a motion on a sexual assault case. Um, um, it's, it's just a very rewarding job, and unless you become a victim, you don't know about us, so don't become a victim. <laughs> <laughs> and we also train in, uh, we are, we're DRCC's, Disaster yeah, response, response Crisis Cases, <coughs> uh, all three of us, except Amy's waiting to get her certification. So we're very well trained. 
Just gonna picture. Oh, I hate my picture being taken. <laughs> <laughs> I feel victimized. Yeah, but now you get to take it with George. That's even worse. You have to have it's your like photo. It's like rock stars. They have a list of things that you don't want to do. I know. <laughs> of Eagle Scouts Brian Hewitt and Kevin Starr will be given to them at their Eagle Scout Awards ceremony. That will be at the Newton Presbyterian Church Sunday afternoon. So you're all invited. We now have a presentation from Tammy Horsfield from the Sussex County Chamber of Commerce for a tourism update and then uh, quickly following that, Jackie Espinosa from BCP. And I'm going to have to do it from here. I apologize, but uh, there's no quick. <laughs> and, and those are really hard acts to follow. Congratulations to all of you. Um, I'm going to start first by Shen. I'm going to pass this to you guys. I'm just not care too much. I'm not taking this over. But I think I'll be perfect. Okay? Good evening, everyone. Once a year, I try to take some time. I'll let you guys finish. <laughs> Once a year, I... Sorry, Jamie. It's okay. Uh, sorry, I can't say it. Nice to see you. Once a year, I try to take some time. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me tonight. Um, once a year, I try to come here and kind of give you an update on some of what's happening in tourism. For those of you on the freeholder board or out in the audience who don't know, um, I'm Tammy Horsfield. I'm president of the Sussex County Chamber of Commerce. Um, and what I'm presenting here this evening is an update on tourism as the chamber is the destination marketing organization as designated for the New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism. Um, we are the entity that they reach out to when visitors come or visitors request information from them. We set up all the tours that come, whether it be chartered bus tours or um, large groups or small groups, uh, individual consumers who come to the area when they go to the state or anywhere else, they're sent to us to fulfill their needs in regard to tourism brochures, information, and such. I'm going to give you an update on what we've no. done Jim. in this. Jim, go. I'm going to give you an update on what we've done um, in this one. Um, what our year would be June to June for tourism. It's very uh, in the June to uh, beginning July 1st. A um, little different fiscal year from our chamber fiscal year, but it gives you a sense of uh, what we do in regard to uh, the promotion of tourism, because as you know, tourism is a very important part of this county and um, adds greatly to um, the economy. As a matter of fact, uh, as I go further, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the stats uh, in regard to those dollars on, on economic impact then. So taking a look at some stats just so you can see, and I don't know if you guys can see that over there or not, but I can tell you that we have had continued growth uh, in tourism over the last, uh, actually the last 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, we became that organization that really focused on promoting yep. tourism in the county. And our goal was to grow tourism. Our first year in doing that, we had an increase of over 10% in tourism. I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, and why? Because we were getting the word out to consumers out there, to large groups that were coming here, and to travel and tour operators around the world, actually, that come here. And you would say, well, why would those kinds of people come here in groups like that? Because they come to New York City. The reality is we reap the benefit of those who come in large groups from the international market as well as the domestic market, and they come, they spend a little time in New York, they usually stay here at least three or four weeks, and they're looking for excursions, they're looking for things to do, they're looking to go to places and have adventure that they've never done before. And so we are able then to connect them, we need to hook them up, we prepare their itineraries, and we help them, we help them come to our area. So as you can see on the stats, in the millions, okay, you can see our numbers. From 
2011 on, we have continued to grow. We're at $522 million, and that was 2016. The 17 numbers are about to come out next month. So we will have an update on the 17 numbers as well. 2016 direct tourism employment. We have 6,277 jobs which are tourism related in this county. Out of that, okay, in 2000, um, 2016, 9.9 .9 of those are direct tourism employment. 9.9% 9, 9 .9 I'm sorry, of the overall employment is direct tourism. And we had a 2% increase in jobs, despite the fact that our economy was as challenging as it was. Our jobs, our employment base still grew in tourism. So that's a good thing. In 2016, in total employment, the total impact, including indirect kinds of employment as well, suppliers and things, um, we had 8,096 jobs. And 12.8% of that was the total share of employment. So just to kind of give you a picture, of, of what tourism really means in our community. You can see up also in the right hand corner is our brand, the Sussex Skylands. You'll see that on each of the pages. That is a brand that has been uh, around for about 12 years. It's taken a long time for it to take. It really has finally taken. All of our visitors that come here know the Sussex Skylands. They probably know better than our own people. Um, but um, our tour groups um, as well, all the travel trade, they all know the Sussex Skylands brand. It's similar to what the Poconos have, only we're the Sussex Skylands. Um, some of the advertising that we've done this year, I can tell you that we spend over $200,000 a year on tourism, the Chamber of Commerce. Through that, we have everything from cable TV ads on CNN, HGTV, USA uh, Network in Bergen County. We also do pre-roll video on New York City zip codes. Uh, samples of those stations are on videos that I'll show you. Uh, Fox, Hallmark, HGTV, History, Lifetime, National Geographic, Travel Channel, TV Land are all a part of our package. Uh, we do full page advertisement in the New Jersey Travel Guide, um, and we always have a, a prime spot there. We have full advertisement in the 2017 Campground and RV Park Vacation Guide, uh, which is available both on print and online. Um, we also um, are in NewJerseyFamily.com, which is a, a great resource for Sussex County. And we do every week. This year, we did winter activities and things to do in 17. We have full ads in New Jersey Family Magazine and banner ads uh, at NewJersey.com to promote the summer season. We had a 12-month advertising fund, NewJersey.com, and uh, travel shows. Um, we participate in a lot of them, and I'll talk about that. And we had 6,500 brochures and magazines that went out in the first uh, two quarters of the year that were distributed. Um, to 12 of our New Jersey uh, visitor um, <coughs> centers across the parkway to Turnpike and other places. In 2018, we follow a similar path, and I won't go through all of them, but we also added in some local uh, advertising because uh, we, they had great audiences, including the Christmas light show and Frozen and Ice uh, at Skylands Park. We felt it was important to promote to those people who are coming from everywhere uh, about other activities so we could bring them on board. We online uh, uh, had some online videos, and also, um, again, uh, shipment of many of our uh, brochures, as well as some rack cards and things that we had made up as well. Give you a sample of some, and it's hard to kind of see it on here, but there are several things we do. One of our themes this year um, is to discover the outdoors. Last year was get your outdoor on. Uh, most of our visitors like the outdoor kinds of stuff. Um, so we continue to focus on some of the outdoor and to discover, even in the winter, discover winter. Um, we're fortunate that Sussex County is a four season tourism destination. Uh, not every county can say they have four seasons worth of opportunity. We have that here. So we've been really fortunate to do that. I'm trying to talk fast because I know you got a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> for other print advertising we do, uh, again, we also do banner ads. This is just an example of some of the ads that we do. Discover winter weekends. Um, we uh, cater to certain niche markets, and we are able to market individually in some of our print and some of our digital advertising. Rack cards, those are our rack cards. They are actually calendar events, major events happening in this county. We have a ton of them. We're very fortunate that we have events of the, of the size we have at our fairgrounds, at our Skyland Stadium, at our resorts, um, and we're able to share that information uh, in many ways, but especially through our rack cards and, um, online as well as uh, physically. 
We also have our magazines. You've seen the Sussex County magazines around. It is uh, our publication, and uh, we try to highlight both um, tourism as well as general business across the board. And of course, tourism is business, um, so it's important for us to continue to do that. Well, you laugh, but some people oh, no, don't no, think I was, that, I was right? A, it was an affirmative laugh. <laughs> I'm going to give you a quick example because it's very short of a short summer video we did, and I'll show you. That's just one of our summer videos. And of course, much of it is about our major resorts, and it is on purpose because when you have groups and uh, coming to the area, they see the icons first. Once they come and they see the big anchors, then they come and learn the rest. Oh. And then we have our winter video. example of a couple of videos that we use in various media to promote the area and bring people here. We're also very active in the travel trade uh, area. Uh, I personally do the travel trade shows um, and uh, we attended this year so far, uh, just given you 2018 to give you kind of a capsule of where we are. In January I had two travel shows. We did the American Bus Association which is a charter bus, um, a very large charter bus show where there are appointments, one-on-one -on -one appointments, like speed dating or something. <laughs> and <laughs> with a bus. <laughs> no, you have one-on-one -on -one appointments with these operators, and you have the time to talk to them about all you have to offer in your community. Uh, we usually get seven or eight minutes, and then we have to truly run to the next one. You've got a minute to get over to the other side. But anyway, typically there are, um, thousands of tour operators there, and they're mutual appointments where we have an opportunity to really talk to one another. I was fortunate out of that already this year, and that was in January, we already have uh, two tour, op tour operators who have set visits up, and we are in the process of scheduling everything. One is Garden State Getaways, and they cater to more of a senior group um, with, um, with dollars, disposable income. And uh, they're looking, actually, they're going to probably stay at Crystal Springs Resort, but they want to set up several um, uh, tours uh, in various areas throughout the county. They, they want to go to places <coughs> like Sterling Hill Mine. Um, they want to take a look at, uh, of course, they want the spas and, and other kinds of stuff. They want to go through uh, Lafayette. They want to go to the uh, antique mills and such. So it's kind of nice that there's a wide variety of that to offer. We also have another very large tour tour group for the first time coming here, and it's, this is going to be really funny, it's the American Tour Guide Association. The person who runs the American Tour Association, the president, lives in Sparta, mm -hmm. knows nothing really about tourism here because she travels around the world. Um, she, um, she it's, it's funny, we were, we were just talking about that and laughing. She said, I come home asleep and I leave again. Um, <laughs> but she's interested in the group coming. Um, it's a very unique kind of tour. She does typical leisure tours, performing arts, and, and student education, culinary, and faith-based, and eco tours. But she also does um, agricultural tours, but not like you think. She brings international farmers from around the world, from Brazil, from Australia, and other areas, to learn about agricultural techniques here in the States. So I'm going to be taking her on a tour of several of our farms. And um, they're going to be learning these professional farmers about what we do here. So I think that's pretty neat. That's kind of a, a niche, if you will. Um, but she, she does many other things. I'm getting ready actually to leave um, in May. I've, I've gone like half of May, it seems like, but not really personal, personal as well as to um, Colorado. The International Powwow is the largest international show in the world. Now, I don't go there as just Sussex County, okay? This, this, 
being realistic. <laughs> you know, people come to New York City again, as I say. But I am one of five selected by the state of New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism to be at the show with them. We have 200 appointments within three days. And we sit and we work with all those tour operators to share. We share all the leads and all the information. So all of those 200 tour operators that Steve has, I get all their information. And we're able then to follow up with these people to provide information and to encourage them to come here. So we're pretty fortunate in that. I also do some other shows. I'm not yet there on this, but I do the Ontario Motor Coach Association, which is another huge show. Um, and uh, there are a couple of others, the National Tour, once in a while I'll do, all comes down to money. Um, <laughs> you can only do so much. Um, we also have the Sussex County Rails and Trails Guides. I'm sure many of you have seen our Rails and Trails Guides. We have, um, <coughs> we usually go through 100,000 of them within a year and a half. It's, one of, it's the most popular publication we have. Um, we are also in the process, um, well we actually, before I say that, we distribute all of those in the Stormpike Parkway, other outlets, corporate centers, you name it. And also a lot of consumers who call us for them, both local as well as um, distance. But the chamber also uh, is very, very involved in our trail system. We uh, help maintain them. We have an uh, informal um, MOU, uh, Memorandum of Understanding, where we're able to go and actually clean and clear trails. We completed the 13 and a half mile loop that is um, for the Sussex Branch, Poland Scale, New England Trail. It was the chamber who went out. We actually cleaned and cleared it when Elizabeth Town Gas decided that they would donate that property. Um, we are also assisting the parks now in looking at some other new trails that are going to happen in Andover. And um, we are, we placed and purchased wayfinder signs on the Sussex Branch Trail so when people go onto the trail they can see where they are, what has to offer, and we even added some amenities to it so people need a restaurant or a restroom or something else. We're in the process right now of redoing, you know the kiosks that you see when you come in and they're usually got dead bugs on them, <laughs> tiny, that are old, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> We're actually going to buy new ones and we are going to help to maintain them. We're going to redo them, we're going to make them nice, so that eventually we can get them all. I can do three or four this year. I'm hoping to do more in the future and continue to grow that. Um, we do several cleanups. Our next one is on Earth Day, so if you want to roll your sleeves up on April 20th at 9.30 in the morning, we'd be happy to have you help us clean some trails. <laughs> we do painting, we do clearing, we do all kinds of stuff. Um, it's actually a lot of fun, and uh, it's a great way to get to really know people. Um, we're assisting right now Lafayette Township. I'm personally assisting them in trying to get a bridge from the village across um, so that people can actually make a loop from the antique mill around to the village and be able to park there and be able to walk. Um, right now we don't have access on that side. That makes it a shorter walk to be able to do that. So we're trying to work on that. It requires, unfortunately, a bridge. <laughs> we all know what that means. Um, so we'll be working with the DEP, although the state parks are 100% behind it, so it helps a little bit to have that. We've had, I've had them involved in working with that. We also uh, worked with Branchville to um, encourage them to have the state purchase the surface rights of that mm -hmm. trail area. That has happened. It just was finalized. So uh, that's a great opportunity for us and for Branchville. And then finally, on September 11th of 2018, this year, the Chamber at its breakfast will celebrate our committee, the Sussex County Trails Partnership Committee's 10th anniversary. And we've done a lot of stuff in 10 years on the trail committee. So um, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, research, the chamber is in the process of a number of things. We're finalizing a visitor profile study. That report will be done by June of 2018. It's been ongoing, it's through Stockton University. That report will tell us a lot about the visitor that comes here, where they come from, what they spend, what they do, how long they stay, all of that. We did one back in 2008. It is time for us to do a new one and really take a good look at where we went. Um, we're really kind of tracking our ROI. We track our research on an annual basis so that we can see where we are with tourism, but this is a bigger picture. We then will have an economic impact study done, uh, conducted beginning in April of this year. That economic impact study will tell us so much more. As it did in 2008, we had an economic impact study done. That told us that $358 out of every household in your taxes, uh, you would have had to pay if it wasn't for tourism. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you a ballpark. I'm really curious to see where we are now. So we'll take a look at that, and that'll begin in April, and that's being done by Tourism Economics, which is um, also the state's research company. It's pretty well known in the tourism industry. And then Destination Next, 
uh, our assessment. We're waiting for a local assessment. Some of you are there. Unfortunately, the um, uh, the Destination Next consultant gave us the wrong study. <laughs> so we'll be doing that one over. I was just in touch with them today because I've not received my copy yet and they say it will be coming shortly. And that really is a futuristic picture for us locally in Sussex County to get a better sense of what the future looks like and the potential and to get a better sense of a gauge of what we think the community wants. So that's going to be an important assessment for us um, and important for us in, in our marketing efforts. Uh, also, the Skylines website, uh, we're in the middle right now of having a whole new revamp. It's being done by the U.S. Travel Association's top website designer called Simple View, and uh, it will be great. I've already made a request, and Greg and I have spoken a lot about this, um, to make it a seamless link with the county. Right now, you have a tourism link, and it has a couple of little things listed, and then this, <coughs> we're going to clean that. Right, Herb and I had a huge conversation about that. Um, the visitor doesn't care where they're going. They just go somewhere and they just want the information. It has to be seamless. The visitor, no offense, isn't going to the County of Sussex to ask for their information. They're usually going to the Chamber of Commerce or Tourism Bureau or CBB, okay? We want that to be seamless for you. So that if it's there, if people are there, that information's readily available. Same thing, you have a wonderful historic markers video, okay? That video belongs on our site. We should be promoting historic markers. We want to make sure we take care of that stuff. We are a team. We need to work together because people only want to go one place for their information. Same thing with the farm visits. You have a great farm visits opportunity there. We've worked for years with you, with the county, on the agricultural land. So it's important for us to make sure that we work together to make sure that stuff happens. So lots of stuff is happening on our end. Keeping up on professional development, um, I am certified, I'm one of only 150 that were certified back in 2011 as a destination marketing, uh, a destination management executive. Um, I'm up for recertification. I have the next six months to do 16 credits. They just told us. It just happened that they had recertification happen. So um, I'll be busy. <laughs> um, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of uh, review and research and all kinds of stuff. Also, I'll participate in the New Jersey Tourism Conference. Um, and we provide training to our uh, tourism community. We had Disney here three times. We did quality service, employee engagement, and leadership. Yes, real Disney, Disney Institute. And uh, we had them for uh, days of training. Um, we also just had a, work by, a workplace violence prevention program, and we are having an exam, advanced concepts now. Um, we are coming back in June, and we're going to do that. So important to this community. Not anyone in this community is immune to any of this that's happening. Unfortunately, the world um, is a crazy place. I hate to say that, but <laughs> um, it's important for everyone to understand how to respond, how to react, what to look for, and uh, we're going to do our best to provide that training. And then finally, also, uh, very involved in the Jersey State Fair. Uh, we partner with you, the county. I'm proud of that, that we were able to partner together to really bring the county building to life if you will, and I say that because we have a lot of activities going on there. We had everything from um, mountain bike demos to putting greens, and uh, Wild West City did rope shows. We had um, space farms bringing live animals. It was a, really came to life. We had mannequins. I had a, a miner up there. I had a, a zip liner. I had all kinds of stuff up there that really showed off to those who come to our fair, almost 125,000 people, what we have in regard to tourism in this county. So thank you for, for becoming partners and doing that because I think that takes us a long way in promoting the county. Um, one thing I have asked and I talked to Greg, it's important that we partner in working that booth because the chamber really did a lot of it last last couple of years. Um, and we're not immune, you know, we're not adverse to doing that, but we'd like some county help in that. Um, it's a long 10 day fair. <laughs> And that's really uh, my show. Um, I hope I didn't take up too much time, but I thought it was important for you to really get your arms around understanding how big this is and how much effort we really put into tourism in this county. So um, I thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Will you please have Jackie Espinosa from JCPenney? I hope yours goes as well.
I hope your presentation goes as well. Oh, mine will be very quick. <laughs> <laughs> so in addition to being on call 24-7 for Georgia Central Carolina Light, I'm not on the board with Tammy, and she works really, really hard <coughs> and keeps me busy. But really why I came here tonight was... Here. What? Here. No, no. Well, I'm going to change. Okay. Yeah, I change it up. Okay. I just really want to come out and thank all of you for the support of all the county officials during the storms that we had in March, starting on March 2nd. I almost feel like March didn't even exist in my life because I worked the entire month. But we started with um, Storm Riley and Quinn, then Toby came, but we weren't affected by Toby. Toby. But a shout out to Sheriff Strada, Corporal Mark Vogel, and all of the agency heads that were staff at the OEM office. And I don't know if everybody knew, but we had a JCP no representative at the OAM office. And it worked really well. The representative who was staffed there worked closely with Mark Vogel on prioritizing the critical facilities, all of the road closures that we had, you know, which ones we should tackle first. Um, we had over 200 roads that had to be attended to due to down trees, broken poles, wires, live wires. And that's just over 200 in Sussex County out of the Newton District. We serve primarily in the entire county, plus three towns in, um, in Warren County, but not the back on the stand up, so, so it's a lot. We had all the schools energized so that they wanted to open on Monday, they could open on Monday. Three of the radio communication towers were down, some of the fire departments, municipal buildings, we had the County 911 Center out, the college, there was a lot to focus on within those few days. Um, Greg, I also want to thank you because you were accessible on the weekend, I think it was a Sunday, and you were on your way down the shore, and I had to reach out to him because we had an issue on, uh, we wanted to work a project on the county road, and I needed his guidance, so thank you for that. But what we're going to do, uh, you'll be receiving an invitation <coughs> In the short term, hopefully by the end of the week, I'm working with Mark Vogel. We're going to have workshops at the county OEM office. So it's for the local OEM coordinator, police chiefs, JCPNL, county OEM. But we want the mayors there. And we're inviting all the freeholders as well. There's a, a, a process that we follow. It's called the Instant Command System. And Police and fire, they all follow that process. We're now integrated into that. So this is the first time that we had a large scale event that we had all of the agencies there and it worked really well. However, we want to make sure everyone's on the same plate. Like the OEMs, they loved it. The sheriff loved how this worked. We got the critical facilities done. We need to educate the township officials well. So have everybody in the same room. We're gonna have three of these workshops. We're gonna break it down just so it's smaller, interactive. We're gonna dive deep into this. And the township officials see the storm under a different set of lenses, I may say. And to bring it together, and if everyone understands what the process is, I think it'll go a lot further than that. So I encourage you all to attend if you can. If you cannot and you wanna meet with me separately, you can go over everything. But I think it'll be really um, valuable to be in the room with the OEM coordinators, with Mark Vogel, and JCPNL, and talk this through. Because I feel you always get better. Oh, Carl. <laughs> Carl does that. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> we talk about power. He's yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> <He's charging. laughs> so do you that it, it's very important and it's welcomed. On effort to make these situations go a lot smoother. So that's what I have for tonight. The workshops will be probably about maybe an hour or two. We already did one in Morris County last night. It went very well. It was very enlightening to the township officials. And I've been meeting with some of the mayors and OEM coordinators on an individual basis as well to explain it. And we have a few new local OEM coordinators. Do you have so. dates yet? No, we don't have the dates. I have a few dates in mind, I just want to confirm with Mark. And I may do an afternoon and then two evening. This way, just, you know, some people prefer the day, their local, because the town council meetings are at night, so I'm trying to pick a night where there's fewer council meetings. 
On to public hearings. A. Amended second reading and final adoption, Ordinance 18 02. At our regular meeting held on March 14, 2018, we introduced on the first reading the following bond ordinance. The bond ordinance was advertised in the New Jersey Herald on March 19, 2018, with a notice of pending bond ordinance stating that a public hearing be held on March 28, 2018. Public hearing was properly held on March 28, 2018. However, there was a clerical error concerning the bond ordinance that was considered for final adoption after the public hearing. Bond Council is advised that the bond, motion, bond ordinance needs to be considered and voted on again for final adoption. I have a motion. 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 Second. Motion by Lazaro, second by Grant. This is the bond ordinance providing for the undertaking of 2018 capital improvements at and for certain facilities to Sussex County Community College located within the county of Sussex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $2,800,000. Therefore, in authorizing the issuance of $2,800,000 bonds or notes to the county of Sussex, State of New Jersey for financing such appropriation, the principal of an interest on the aggregate amount, principal amount, of which will be entitled to state aid pursuant to Chapter 12 of the Laws of New Jersey of 1971. Discussion, please. Yeah, um, there is a, a bill or a, I'm not sure, a bill that will be coming out to put a notice for voters to call the Career and Technical Education Bond Act, or uh, issues $500 million in state general obligation bonds for vocational, um, uh, for grants for vocational school districts and county colleges, uh, $450 million for county vocational school districts and $50 million for county colleges. Um, you're looking for partnerships between the technical schools and the colleges. What's interesting about this is that if the public moves forward uh, with this, it would require any technical educational project county in the county established um, school district or county colleges uh, supports 25% of the cost of the project. In other words, the freeholders of the county would only be, be responsible for 25% of the project. The matching requirement may be met through cash contributions, in-kind contributions, including but not limited to, to land, facilities, equipment, um, or whatever permitted by the Commissioner of Education. A grant provides under the bill of support the remaining amount of 75% of the cost of the project. Um, can this project wait? To that end, Mr. Koff, can you read off uh, the language in the bond ordinance about what this is specifically for? There was um, uh, perhaps a misunderstanding in the paper about what this bond provided for, so if you could read that language. <clears throat> yes, in section one of the bond ordinance that is being considered by the freeholders, the specific projects uh, identified at the Sussex County Community College include uh, various general capital improvements, including welding facilities improvements, electrical improvements in building E, elevator improvements and or replacement in buildings B, D, and E, and the library and the university center improvements and or construction. So what we've done, chapter, uh, reallocation, this one is, let's see, March 27th. Uh, we're going to reallocation from building and heating, windows for say v, uh, HVAC, two million, moving it over to culinary careers. So, what, what are you, what are you, so what, what uh, the document you're looking at was uh, was a um, was a motion passed at the SS County Community College Board of School estimates. Right. That's unrelated. To unrelated. This. Unrelated to this. What I'm, what I'm saying is that. We're, we're moving money for other projects and we're, which this money could be used for this project. Mr. Director, if I may. 
Uh, <clears throat> the document that Freeholder Yardley is referring to is a resolution that was considered by the Community College Board of Trustees recommending a reallocation of certain Chapter 12 funds. That, that's past funds, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Um, it, it, it actually uh, touches upon some of the allocations identified in the current bond ordinance. However, what should be noted, and it was considered uh, at the Board of School Estimate. However, the bond ordinance that is being considered by the Freeholder Board right now is in accordance with the recommendations from the College Board of School Estimate uh, as presented at last year's Board of School Estimate meeting and does not incorporate the changes that were considered by the College Board of Trustees and the Board of School Estimate at last week's meeting there would have to be a subsequent amendment to the bond ordinance that is up for final adoption at the freeholder board that does not make reference to the culinary facilities or other trade facilities. And it's the culinary facilities and the other trade facilities that led to the confusion of what had been uh, considered uh, for final adoption. An earlier draft of that bond ordinance referenced additional trade facility improvements as well as culinary facility improvements. But as the Board of School Estimate uh, has recommended at last year's Board of School Estimate meeting, this $2.8 million is specifically for the items that I had read into the record earlier. So, what Freeholder Yardley is referring to would have to be considered by the Board of Chosen Freeholders uh, at some future time. Uh, Mr. Pop, with respect to the Board of School Estimate, um, can you uh, just go over what the purpose of that board is and how bonds uh, come to the Freeholder Board from the Board of School Estimates? Just both for the Freeholder Board uh, is education and for the public's. Uh, yes, there, there are Chapter 12 funds that are used for capital improvements at the county college, and half of that comes from the state of New Jersey, the other half comes from the county. What the Board of School Estimate does on an annual basis is it considers recommendations of funding for the community college, uh, its general operations, as well as, in the case of Sussex County, uh, funds for the uh, operation and maintenance of the Public Safety Training Academy that was uh, transferred under the jurisdiction of the community college a number of years ago, as well as the capital improvements that are recommended that comprise the Chapter 12 improvements uh, that we're talking about now. And so those recommendations uh, come from the Board of Trustees in the form of uh, draft budget documents, but ultimately it is the determination made by the Board of School Estimate that in fact puts in place that financing for the operations of the County College as well as the capital improvements that will be undertaken through the use of Chapter 12 funds uh, for the capital improvements of the College. So, uh, Mr. Hurt, Mr. Gardley's suggestion is to utilize past ones. What would be the process to do that if, say, the Freeholder Board uh, were to uh, to turn down this, this uh, ordinance tonight? What would be the process to utilize those previous uh, Chapter 12 monies? Uh, the, the Chapter 12 monies that are being considered in this bond ordinance, in fact, are the uh, funds that were previously allocated um, by the Board of School Estimate in the uh, county last year. Um, so the improvements that are enumerated in this particular bond ordinance are those projects that were duly considered by the Board of School Estimate at its meeting last year. The, the projects that Freeholder Yardley was referring to in the reallocation was just considered by the Board of School Estimate and would be considered in a future bond ordinance 
not the bond ordinance that's before the free board this evening. Uh, perhaps you or, or Mr. Williams, uh, if if the Freeholder Board were to turn down uh, not just this, but any ordinance, any bond ordinance that had been uh, considered and, and approved by the Board of School Estimate, does SCCC uh, or, or any other entity have any legal recourse that could force the Freeholder Board to, uh, to obtain those monies? I, I, I could answer that. <laughs> generally speaking, the answer will be no. Uh, uh, given that we already approved this at the Board of Estimate, and what we're doing today is approving a change of work. Uh, essentially, if we voted against this, we'd be rescinding it. So the, the, the concept of borrowing the money was approved in the 2017 Board of School Estimate, but that doesn't mean, you know, at any time an ordinance can be voted down. So it's, uh, it, is, it is not, it is not uh, approved until it's, until it's approved. And uh, with, with that being said, uh, bond ordinance do, do require two-thirds of the full membership of the board. That is three and one-third people, two-thirds of five. There's no such thing as one-third of a person, so it does require four affirmative votes uh, to uh, to enact this uh, bond ordinance, Mr. Graham. Well, this was approved in 2017, and it was Chapter 12, which means it's, it's essentially it's a 50 percent buy-in. One of the difficulties we have with the Sussex County Community College is, is that there's two different funding mechanisms besides your, your our funding here and the funding from uh, from uh, what comes from tuition, and that is something called chargebacks. So that there are a lot of courses that are offered by other community colleges, particularly CCM, which poaches a number of our students by changing, and I'm going to use the word poach because that's what they're doing. I've asked the college to be much more uh, <coughs> diligent about uh, uh, approaching this. And that is they, they take a, a course and they change the uh, curriculum just slightly, and now it becomes a different curriculum. So on top of our funding mechanism, there's another hundreds of thousands of dollars that we have to pay out of our, our operating budget for those students that don't go to the college. The college is old. There is a buildings over there that are built in the 1930s. Some are built in the 1960s. The facilities are, uh, are sort of uh, like an old high school. I looked past my high school. It was built in 1908 the other day. And I said, boy, it seemed old when I was there. And that was 50 years ago. It's gotten a lot older. We have the same problem up on the hill. There's a lot of things about the college that need repair. A viable county has to have an educational system that, that allows for families to grow. And I know that we had people in here for years that were saying doom and gloom, doom and gloom. Tourism is up, but also people moving back into the county is up, and families are up. We walk away from our educational systems, and we walk away from the, the realities of what the future really holds. There's a lot of years that the Sussex County Community College was not, I don't want to say funded, was not properly, I'm not trying to be diplomatic here, I'm trying to be accurate. It wasn't, ac it wasn't, it wasn't properly at helm. At the helm, it really wasn't taken care of properly. And so a lot of years, instead of the college going in a, in a positive direction, it, it was treading water. And that's what we're paying the price for right now, in both curriculum and in facilities. I'm a facilities guy. I spent many, many years overseeing the building of, of schools. I walk through that school and I shake my head. Um, I've had three children, one that went to a very, very expensive college, one that went to CCM, and then one went to here. All three of them got a good education. But it's a matter of who wants to go to that college. You know, your kid gets out of school, out of high school, and I know it's been a, a depleting enrollment, but that's not the college's fault all the way along. That's also because of how things are. I, I was, uh, Carolyn congratulated me because I have a, a new grandson. Well, it took 15 years of my family to see any kids. Nobody's having kids. That's a reality. But they are starting to have kids again. Families are starting to grow. There is a, a slight uptick in all of this. We have to be there for the future. Uh, Herb has pointed out some of the curriculum changes. I, I was uh, a slow, I was slow on board understanding what the college was trying to tell us. And they were talking about middle skills. 
because that's really where, where a lot of things have, have, um, have moved to. Forbes magazine wrote a, a very compelling article that we, that the, where for years, kids were going into school and older people were going into school for computer skills. The computer skills are not really the skills where they're looking for right now. There's another, there's another end of skills. There's a lot of middle skills. There's, there's advanced into auto. There's advanced into welding. These skills are real. And these skills are where jobs are. And these are skills where jobs are locally. Uh, there are places up here, Jonathan has, has, has pointed out that there are places up here that, that he does business with that they can't find people. Those people can't are not here to do those jobs. I think walking away from those middle skills is walking away from the future. We, we've done this before. We did this in 2008, 2010, 2013. We did this before. If we don't look ahead to where the future is going in Sussex County Community College, basically we're saying, okay, fine, let's continue going on where we are. And then those chargeback numbers are going to go from three hundred to four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars because CCM is putting that in there. And there's a compelling reason for people to move into Sussex County. <laughs> Quite honestly, it's getting expensive in Madison, and it's getting expensive in Mendham, and it's getting expensive in Sakasana. So people are moving back into Sussex County. But we have to allow them to also grow their families. Also, we have so, also and so, something that I've advocated for years, is that we have to realize that anybody can have a bad day in their career. You can be age 35, you can be age 55, and have a bad day in your career. And if you don't move into something new, you don't move anywhere. You know, unemployment, it doesn't last for two years anymore. Unemployment is now a, you know, get in, get out. That's it. You have to do something else in your life. I'm advocating that we, we first of all, maintain the structure of Sussex County Community College. For us to merge with other college systems is going to cost us just as much money as this college system costs us. And then we're also going to have all those buildings on the hill. And they're still going to cost us money. Does the two million eight sound realistic against a declining enrollment? I don't know. They built the Empire State Building in the height of the depression. You have to have some future. You have to have some some hope in the future. Vision. And I think that this does show vision, a compelling vision. Welding is not all handled at the tech level. I know that you came in your tech school um, and you said <coughs> they're already doing it there. They are doing it there. They're doing it at this level. But we're looking for people who have those extra couple of years that not only understand how to do the, the mechanical skill, but also the business that goes along with that. Great employees are employees that think. And that's what I think Sussex County Community College does. And I, I probably went on too long, but that's, I feel very, very strongly that this is a, a worthwhile bond. It was in 2017. It was a more visionary in 17 than it is in 18. I advise you to look at NPR's um, uh, report, I think you can see it on the, on the web, about middle skills, and I advise you to read the Forbes magazine articles on where middle skills are. There's so many of them. In fact, if you can't find them, go to our library, because our library is, uh, is uh, strongly growing also. We believe in the, in the educational opportunities in Sussex County, because the more we, we make Sussex County a, a, a good place for education, the more likelihood we have people staying there. So that's... That's yeah. fine. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Just, just to be clear, the only educational program this funds is welding. The vast majority of the money would be for uh, capital improvements to buildings, to existing facilities. Uh, nice. 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 In the university center. Yes. yes. Buildings, though. Yes. It does not, not programs. Correct. Yeah. Okay, what you're asking us to do is to vote down this ordinance that was already approved, to rely on a referendum that could be defeated. And if that referendum is approved, there's only $50 million allocated <coughs> for county colleges. So out of that $50 million, you don't know if this project would even be approved there's, for that. But there's 450 That's for million. high school. That's for that's, high school. That's for the road tax. That's right. right. And that's not what our ordinance is about. It's about I, I, so I, I wasn't here last week, and I just want to take the time, because I want to talk about technical education. Because things I read uh, and things that I hear um, I think people think that technical education on a college level is just the same as the high school level and, and we're doing the same courses and that's not what happening, what's happening at all in the field. Right now we have a skilled trade shortage that was caused by a variety of reasons. The trades lost nearly a million skilled workers during the recession. 
We also have the No Child Left Behind program that put cultural pressure on students to go for college education and not the trades but added to the, pro the problem that we have. And now on top of all of this, you have your older workers, the baby boomers, who are getting ready to retire and the situation is becoming more severe. Because of the new technologies associated with the trade industries, there is a need for a different type of education that is available on a community college level. Today, the county college develops a career path for students and propels them upward. Students are immersed in the world of critical thinking. They learn higher level skills and a different caliber of problem solving on a county college level. I just want to take a moment to look at what Sussex County College is doing with the automotive program that they have already in place. The college has the ability to alter their curriculum every year, which the high school does not. As they alter this curriculum, they're able to keep up with the changes in the industry's technology. They keep their programs relevant as the technology continues to advance. And some of the changes are in what happens when you have a recall or you're working on a hybrid um, and the auto car technology is out and the parabolic vision now with the camera that comes together like your eyes and can stop your car and see what's in front of you. These are all advances in technology and as we know technology is moving very quickly in every industry and that's the same that it's moving in the trades. These people, these students that come to the county college are receiving advanced training and how to learn about these different systems that control this different uh, technical advances and then they have to learn how to problem solve for all of these different issues that they have. In the college level, they also hire active practitioners and instructors such as Jason Fridges, who is here tonight, who is a golden wrench in the industry and is also the supervisor at Sussex County Community College for career and technical education programs. One of the dealerships that the county partners with is Subaru, and last week I had the opportunity to speak to Mark Russo, who was the technical training education manager for Subaru nationally. Here's what he had to say about the associate program. He said that dealerships in the automotive industry favor college-educated employees because it shows that they are interested in moving upward in their career. It is not just a job to them. They want to continue to learn as the industry evolves. Subaru dealerships need career-minded people with more education to hold positions such as shop foreman, quality control manager, and service directors. They are looking for people who have expanded their interest in working their way through the industry. They need to be well-educated and have higher level of thinking skills in order to problem solve with teams and collaborate with engineers and with designers. For Subaru, they are looking for college level students focused on the future. Once these students are hired, they will then receive continual training because the industry is constantly changing. So not only do you need the advanced education on a college level, once you get into these dealerships, and you, you receive these jobs, they are going to continue to train you so you continue to learn as everything in the industry advances. Your continual training goes on and on and on because technology is changing over and over and over. Right now, Subaru um, has five levels of training over eight skill groups. Subaru is willing, willing to make an investment in the student that has that secondary degree and has acquired the foundational skills for advanced training. In today's industry, that training, as I said, is constant. He also added that right now there is a shortage and dealerships are starting to actually steal employees from each other. The best technicians are making six-figure salaries. Right now, the County College has partnerships with UPS, Goldman Sachs, Intercar, BMW, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Ford Labs, Campbell, Sparta Machine Tool Company, Selective Insurance, and others. So they're working in partnerships to make sure that the needs of the industry are being met on the edu educational level that they offer at the county college. So as you can see, just to recap that, taking trade programs at a college level is very different than taking tech programs in a high school. 
In college, they receive advanced courses with higher learning skills and critical thinking skills. Programs are tweaked to meet the changes in the industry, so the courses are always relevant. And college programs focus on the future, building a solid foundation for continued training in the industry. And that's the difference. It's not the same. And if you know anything about education, the trends are always changing. You know, whether it's changing on, on the corp uh, subjects that are coming in from the state or whether it's changing in the industry that they're being trained to work in. It's constantly evolving. It's constantly in changing. It's important that our county college remains relevant and competitive. And that's why, even though we're only starting with one technical course, which is wealthy, I think it's important that we get started. So I don't think we should um, vote no on this ordinance. Thank you, Deputy Director. Any further comments? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Batillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Freeholder Yardley? No. 2018 Sussex County budget as approved. Motion to open the public hearing for the 2018 Sussex County budget is approved. So moved. Motion by Patil. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. Please note, everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less and only address issues regarding the 2018 Sussex County budget is approved, followed by a three-minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print your name, Ms. Pelley, on the sign sheet. Mr. Director, uh, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, I have a brief presentation that might be helpful uh, prior to uh, people coming forward uh, okay. in regards to the budget. Uh, if you give me just a moment, I, <clears throat> I promise I'll be more brief than I was the last time when the freeholder board uh, considered the introduction of the budget. Can I ask one straight question before it goes? One straight question. What is the percent increase in the levy? Uh, the levy is 1.9% uh, uh, when taken into account the additional new construction, the amount that will be collected. <coughs> Totals ninety-two million one hundred one thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars. So it's one point nine percent, not three point something percent that was in the paper. Uh, what was presented in the paper uh, was the amount that the budget is going up. Right. But there were total revenues, revenues against that. Total revenues and appropriations because we are required to have a balanced budget. Uh, one of the things that uh, skews particularly a county budget in terms of the total uh, increase in the budget are the various grants uh, that the county receives. And so uh, in the case of this year, I believe that uh, we were recognizing an excess of an additional million dollars worth of grants. But those grants are offset. Yes, exactly, right. both in terms of revenues and appropriations, and, and you'll actually see that. Right, but, but I just wanted to clarify that, that. That's what happens, is that um, our grants go to the, the top end of the budget, what the number is. So if it, if it was $108 million, we receive an extra million dollars of grant, it's $109 million. And so that's why that number comes out looking differently than what it really is. So what's the number? Just said 1.9%. 1.9%? It's 1.9% when taken with the additional revenues that will be collected as a result of new construction. It's the amount that I had read prior. And what's the <coughs> rate per household? How much money will put per household? Um, the uh, average incre the increase to the average household, uh, this budget uh, calls for a $17 increase for the uh, general operations of the county as compared to, I believe, $43 was last year. And that, that, by the way, I'd like to also point out one other thing. That also includes having to maintain a, uh, a, a supply of $2.2 million to pay our solar bond obligations that will continue on for the next 10 years per year. <coughs> Okay, uh, every year the Board of Chosen Freeholders is required by law 
to adopt a county budget. <clears throat> the budget subcommittee comprised of uh, comprised of two freeholders and county staff prepares recommendations in the form of a draft budget, but the freeholder board must ensure that the adopted budget adequately satisfies the needs of the community and serves the best interests of the county and its taxpayers. The 2018 county budget, including the capital improvement program, totals $109,661,855. The county is within its uh, state mandated budget caps. Significant dollar increases are seen in group health insurance, salaries and wages, and the maintenance of patients in state psychiatric facilities. The county has taken action over the past few years to limit tax increases while still preserving services in accordance with residents' expectations. The cost-saving actions taken by the freeholder board include reducing staffing levels, limiting operating expenses, and considering new shared service agreements with other local governments. Revenues, uh, which you see on the slide before you, come from five sources, including the county purpose tax, state aid, offset with appropriations, and that revenue is what is represented by the grants that the county will receive miscellaneous revenues generated by operations and fund balance. In 2018, the county will receive $1,573,906 from the state in the form of franchise tax on life insurance companies and principal and interest payments on county college bonds. The county's general fund balance as of December 31st, 2017 was $15,889,577. Fund balance is generated by the lapsing of previous year budget reserves, collecting revenues in excess of anticipated amounts, and miscellaneous revenues not anticipated. Revenues collected in excess of anticipated amounts were realized in county clerk fees, county sheriff fees, and interest on investments and deposits. The 2018 budget calls for the use of $5,865,648 of fund balance, or $525,648 more, or 9.8% more than in 2017. And you see the fund balance history and the use as anticipated revenues in the chart uh, there. Uh, the bars represent what the balance uh, of fund balance has been with the line uh, showing the amount that's used to offset taxes in the subsequent year. And as you can see, as the county's fund balance has begun to recover uh, from a time in 2010 and 2011 uh, where it was depleted, and you're seeing the fund balance uh, starting to restore, you're also seeing a corresponding, corresponding increase in the amount of fund balance that's used to offset property taxes. <clears throat> Appropriations are the mechanisms that allow county government to provide or deliver services to its residents or stakeholders. Significant dollar increases in this budget are seen in group health insurance of $1,603,739, salary and wages of $506,074, and the maintenance of patients in state psychiatric institutions of $351,898. There are several appropriations included in the uh, 2018 budget that advances a number of county priorities. <clears throat> Just to go back for a moment, the chart that you see there are the costs for group health insurance over time, with the blue bars representing the cost for active employees and the red bars representing uh, the cost for retirees that the county is obligated to provide uh, health insurance for. So the pie chart there shows the total appropriations of $109,661,855 across a number of different component pieces that comprise the county's general fund budget. So those are those priorities that I uh, had mentioned before 
include increasing uh, an amount of money appropriated for the painting of long lines on county roads, professional services and fees associated with the accreditation for the Division of Health, preventive maintenance and repairs to the fire academy, and a me county membership to the Economic Development Partnership. I provided a couple slides this year just with pictures so that it puts into context for people uh, rather than just seeing you know, bar charts and pie charts, actually what your county tax dollars are used for. Uh, these particular items uh, reflect uh, not only the operations of our in-house staff uh, repairing uh, catch basins, uh, but also the contracts that we have for road resurfacing as well as bridge construction. Those services that you see out in the field that are very easy to take a picture of uh, are supported by our engineering department uh, that provide a level of oversight uh, both in terms of outside consulting design as well as in-house design uh, that's prepared by our engineering staff. We also have uh, work done at the, uh, through the Sheriff's Office, uh, including uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, what Ms. Espinoza had mentioned, the County's uh, Emergency Operations Center that was actually uh, taken during one of the recent activations of the County's Emergency Operations Center in support of both county and local emergency operation uh, efforts during these storms as well as uh, educational programs that the Sheriff's Department puts on for community groups uh, in terms of safety and uh, various uh, other programs that the Sheriff's Office uh, provides throughout the county. There were a number of appropriations deferred in order to meet the uh, county's uh, budget requirements. Uh, it was requested additional monies for the long line program that had been deferred and will be considered in subsequent years. Uh, additional funds to increase staff at the Communications Center uh, were deferred uh, as we currently have capacity within the existing staffing levels. And the Community College and Technical School requested additional funding for uh, operations, uh, specifically to increase programs, uh, but that funding uh, was kept level in this year's budget. Uh, again, you see more of uh, the work that's done uh, by county staff, uh, whether it's our uh, bridge and traffic safety that will go out and repair signs, uh, or our road division that will be out uh, clearing ice and snow, and uh, a touch of spring there with our tree crew going out and actually uh, doing roadside maintenance uh, and, and vegetative maintenance along our county roads. <clears throat> also, uh, health and human services in terms of the food pantry that's done, uh, our fleet division uh, maintaining our transit uh, buses as well as the recognition of the county drivers uh, for the work that they do in getting uh, the county's various clients uh, to their various appointments and places uh, that they go uh, through our transit services. <clears throat> so our capital improvement program. The capital improvement program is an important part of the county's financial management plan this includes the preparation, adoption, and implementation of a budget for major capital projects. And the funding of those capital projects is done through a combination of current funds and debt financing. Capital expenditures are typically more than $25,000 and have a period of usefulness of more than five years. This year's capital improvement program totals $10,308,250 with new debt authorized not to exceed $9,904,000. The program includes road resurfacing, technical school science labs, public safety paging and radio system enhancements, and community college facility improvements, and bridge construction and repair. It is noteworthy that the county will receive more than $3 million in 2018 from the State Transportation Trust Fund to subsidize our road resurfacing and bridge construction projects. The pie chart there shows the various component pieces of our capital improvement program by category. <clears throat> Those are, are 10 of our larger uh, capital projects that will be undertaken with the implementation of the 2018 capital improvement program. 
In 2018, the county budget calls for a tax rate increase of 0 0.0072 cents per $100 of assessed value. Despite the cost saving measures mentioned here, the decision to increase taxes is carefully considered in the context of the county's long-term financial health. The change in the county tax rate represents a $17 annual increase for an average assessed home of $245,375. At this time, I'd like to thank the Department of Finance staff and especially Chief Financial Officer Rob Mikus for his assistance in the preparation of the 2018 county budget. This year's county budget maintains a prudent level of surplus so as to avoid spikes in future tax rates. The 2018 county budget as presented limits the impacts to current service levels while being sensitive to the greater economic landscape throughout the county. These services are being preserved in accordance with federal and state statutory requirements and residents' expectations, which contributes to our quality of life here in Sussex County. Thank you. The floor is still open to the public if anyone has any questions or comments regarding the budget. Hello, chosen free holders, how are you? My name is uh, Colin Carrasquillo. I'm here representing the Nielsen Automotive Group in support of Sussex County Community College and the great job they're doing. I just want to let you guys know, you heard before that there's a beautiful reading from uh, Mark Russo, I believe, from Subaru, saying that there is a need for these students. We're Sorry. fortunate enough to partner. Sorry, unfortunately, this, this is only on oh, county for, budget. All right, well, do you sign my name then? You, you could at a, at a, a couple public hearings from now, we'll have the open public. Excellent, thank you. That's all right. Then I'll sign that. Thank you. Is anyone else <laughs> here to be heard? Uh, comments or questions regarding the county budget? It's okay. Come back. Seeing no one, I have a motion to close the public hearing for the public. Motion to close. Second. Motion by Graham, second by Lazaro. Any discussion? Yes, I'd just like to point out a couple of other things. Um, there were things, sometimes you have gifts that, that cost a little bit more money. One of those is the transportation money, the money that we received from the uh, State Department DOT for uh, building our roads. Uh, it's not free money. I everything that we spend, every uh, uh, dollar we spend, about a 25%, 25 cents of that dollar goes into our engineering costs. So when our numbers go up on one side, we also have to be able to move operating money into that funding. So on a $5 million uh, grant that we receive, we have to come up with about a million two a million, somewhere between a million one and a million three, somewhere in there. That's what we have to have. So as that number goes up, we also have to have it. We also have another thing, and that is um, Hishport uh, Open Market. And that is that we have engineers that have to make what they have to make. And um, if we do not pay what they're supposed to be paid, then they move someplace else. So that is another thing that increases our costs. I'd also like to point out in this budget that the mental health I'm going to need some help on this one, Greg. They changed the uh, formula on on um, state on, on mental health benefits or mental health patients. The, the maintenance. Increased it. Yes, they increased it substantially. Yes. Can you you have any idea about that? The number what that was? Uh, yes. The uh, it was in excess of three hundred thousand dollars that the county realized in additional monies that are due the state for the maintenance of patients in state psychiatric institutions. Okay, so in increasing our receiving some money from the DOT, plus this has already put us into, into territories that, that put us into a 1% region. The other one is health insurance. Health insurance has been, just like every one of you in your family that you've had to uh, deal with health insurance increases, the county has also. We only have one place to go with that. Either we, we increase the taxes or we reduce the workforce. And we've done a little bit of both on that. What Any further discussion? Yes. Uh, Ray is here. Sorry, no. Yeah. I'd like you to explain again why we can't use the money from the sale of the homestead uh, as part of the fund balance. Well, that's one of the people. And how much money? Perhaps bond. before you could begin, that what we're actually voting on right now is closing to the public 
The next resolution will be to a final adoption of the county's budget, <coughs> and this discussion may be better to, to wait until then. Would that be fair? That's fine. Okay. Sure. Any further discussion about closing the hearing to the public? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is closed to the public. Resolution regarding final adoption of the 2018 Sussex County budget as approved. Be resolved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders to the County of Sussex that the budget herein before set is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation for the purposes stated of the sums therein set forth as appropriation and authorizing of the amount of $109,661,854.85 for the county purposes to be raised to, by taxation and certification to the County Board of Taxation for the following summary of general revenues and appropriation. I have a motion to finally adopt the 2018 county budget as approved. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Lazaro. Discussion. Mr. Garland. I'd like to have that conversation again. Sorry, Mr. Senator. Okay. And if you would just uh, introduce yourself to the benefit of the public and the first Sure. Ray Sarinelli, County Order, County of Um So the balance of the sale of the homestead you've been holding in reserve on your balance sheet of 7.6 million. When the homestead was sold, it was put into a reserve on the balance sheet with a resolution, which was, I think, produced at the last meeting that basically said the funds would be reserved and restricted for sort of a one-time use and it would need a special authorization in order to use it. Um, I guess part of the discussion should be about the cash that was used in theory from uh, that reserve to fund the acquisition of some of the debt that, uh, for the solar project. So it was portrayed that the cash from the reserve for the homestead sale was used to buy back those notes. You got a better rate a little better rate, favorable rate than maybe what you would have got in public. So while that caveat is out there, um, it really wasn't specifically the reserve for homestead cash that was used by those bonds. It really was the county's available cash in total. So I don't know, to answer your question, I don't know that there's a specific restriction for the funds used to buy those bonds through the solar project. Um, but there is still available 7.6 million that was passed when the homestead was sold to stay in reserve um, for a specific purpose, preferably something for a one-time use. Does that answer the question? It does. Any further discussion? I would like to take a further discussion. We have a, an instrument, right? We have a bond that actually is the is the is the instrument, the equity that we have. That's what we have. We have a bond that's at seven million dollars or, or a portion thereof. Right. So we don't have cash in the bank that is that amount of money. Is that correct? Well, you do have. Uh, I'll say yes. That's correct because you do hold as part of your available balance cash and investment some of which is not cash in a bank, but an investment uh, in a bond that you repay yourself through the MCIA each year. It's like when your grandmother gave you a savings bond for your, uh, for your graduation, you had a $50 savings bond, but you didn't have $50 in cash until you cashed it in. Sort of, yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna put my opinion in here. I've been trying to keep it to, to no opinions, but I'm gonna put my opinion in here. Back in 2015, certain group, certain people, uh, wanted to make sure that the when the solar uh, issue came up for settlement, that there was somebody put in place immediately that they were going to uh, finish out the solar bill. Now. That was going to require an extra $10 million. $6 million of that was this money. And the reason for that, my opinion, is that they needed just what we needed here, 
which was two-thirds of the freeholder board, and they couldn't get the two-thirds of the freeholder board. So what they did was they slipped that money over. MCIA put out six, seven million dollars worth of bonds, and then that money was moved over. So what we did was we took that cash, we bought a bond, and then we've been paying that bond off, but we've been getting an interest on that bond. How that all comes out, how you blend all that in your interest rate, I think we're probably collecting 1% interest on that money. Is that, is that correct also, Mr. Sir? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that sounds right. It was a below market. It was a below market, but that's what it is. That's what it stands. So where we stand right now is we do have an asset. Same as your house. We have an asset. But the asset, what that worth of your house is, what the value of your house is, is, is not anything until you actually sell it. And so that's what we have right here. So taking that asset and using that against our surplus. Now, it does count. It does count in terms of keeping our, our uh, um, bond rating high, does it not? Yes, it does. So it is an asset. It works for us. And we've been trying to uh, accrue a, a, a fund balance that was in excess of $18 million, ultimately. And this takes us to where we have to go to do that. But we just don't have that ability to cash that out, unless we cash it out against the MCIA, and the MCIA then has to find somebody else to pay the bonds. Because we back those bonds. Well, if I could, we, we just, I believe there's $700,000 in cash in the bonds. Because we are paying ourselves back, because this is like, if I'm wrong, explain to me. This is, is like me having a, uh, past big savings account where I say I need ten thousand dollars and I take the ten thousand dollars out and then each month I pay myself back it's not really ten thousand dollars it's not really seven million point six <coughs> we don't hold the bond MCIA holds the bond but we're paying them to get those bonds so back it's, so it's we, we're paying ourselves back with these bonds we're paying ourselves back but we don't hold the bond okay so, so we bought, we bought bonds that we are going to fill, so we could say we have seven point six million dollars. I, I have yet to understand, and I, and I apologize, but I've gone over and over this. And what was done was to, to just seems to, to get the appearance that we have seven point six million dollars when we don't. So we are taking three million three hundred thousand a year, I think, and, and putting it into these bonds. And that number is incorrect. Somebody correct me. But so by 2025, we'll have uh, <coughs> you know the 7.6 million dollars there. So so what I'm saying is that again, instead of a yeah. So bond. so what I'm saying is is we need the cash now in these bonds, and, and this is this is the problem I have with this is that this should count if we're putting money in. This should count towards the uh, reserve balance. And then we should be able to use money from the reserve balance because we have more than fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars in reserve. Mm -hmm. And that's nothing. This is nothing new because I had we had this discussion in the in the workshop. Um, and I just don't understand these bonds because it's like having a passbook savings account. It's not. It's not real money. It's nice for the for the Wall Street to say, hey, you have seven point six million dollars in bonds. With it. But if you take a, a hard look at it, it's really not there unless we put the money. It's like me just taking all the cash I have in my wallet, put it, put it on the table and say, well, I still have a couple hundred in my wallet. Well, I have access to a couple hundred, but not today. <coughs> and that's where, that's where I have a problem with how we did, how we're moving forward here. <coughs> my voice is gone. Uh, how we're moving forward. And I think that that money, if it's $7 million, should, should count towards our uh, reserve account. And then we would have plenty of money to, re to reduce the budget down lower. Because 7 and 15 is 22. So we have a 22 in a reserve. That's how I look at this. And I don't know how you can say that's not the case. Cash-wise, it's not the case. Cash-wise. Cash-wise? I mean, this was a mechanism, I think, to make things look, look well. I, I don't understand the 
total rationale, but the money's not really there. Is, is that what we're saying? Well, I, I guess I would explain two things. Um, the bonds that you have are considered an investment. It's restricted to a specific reserve. So your balance sheet has cash and other investments on the debit side and it has um, the reserve for the, from the sale of the asset, 7.6 million. That 7.6 million is not specifically restricted as it relates to that cash and that investment. From the rating agent standpoint, what they've told us is that you get partial credit for other things. So the $15 million that you have in fund balance is what they look at the basis for. They also give you credit for other reserves, like this reserve, because it is available for general purpose uses if you need it. They also look in your trust funds, they look in your capital, and give you credits for all of those. So to that extent, you're correct. The rating agency is giving you credit, but not full credit. Um, I lost my train of thought on the other point. So the 7.6 is um, had already been reserved, uh, restricted by resolution, right? The freehold, well, the freeholder board placed that resolution on there under the premise that those funds would only be used for a one-time type expense, not to just funnel back into the budget and use it up and it's gone from operating expenses. So I believe it had been used once for a veterans um, cemetery expense. Some part, small part. $50,000. So, but as you know, anything you did by resolution, you can undo by resolution. And that was the premise. It would take a special event or activity in passing on the resolution to use those funds. So, there are, you know, trying to separate those two issues. Yes, you're getting credit, but if you were going to use that, there's a little bit of a process that was put into place, so it wasn't just, oh, we'll just bring it in with the budget. I don't know if that's helpful to the conversation, but that's a little bit of the history of the, the uh, that reserve. So what you're saying is you want to take this, this money and use it to reduce the budget? Yes. Can't do that. Well, it, was, it wasn't set aside for that. It was set aside and was to be specifically used for a, a purpose that the board decided it would be used for, not to be rolled into the budget. Uh, it's gone. Once you roll it into the budget, it's gone. Well, and then we have to get it, it again next year. And it could be used for a capital project, which would reduce the cost to a capital project, which would then impact the budget. So I'm just saying that this money is so tied up um, and that was the intent of the yeah. board that did it. But it's not real money. It's not the $7.6 million isn't there. So you can't get that tomorrow. You can't get that tomorrow. But no, you do because a previous board took that money and used it for a purpose to offset the uh, the solar cost. Right, they took six And we were millions. stuck with what they gave us. Right. So we six. can't undo that now. The money's been spent. Am I correct? It's spent money. Well, it's shifted. Okay. It's not really, and that's what the problem is. The problem is, and this is, no, it, isn't, it isn't semantics. It isn't semantics. So believe me, I, I spent, I, I lived through this, and I was trying to understand it as it was going on. And believe me, there was a lot of high fluid finance flying all over the place. But when you get right down to the end, it does, it does make sense. I didn't agree with it. I still don't agree with it, but it does make sense. It's, it's shifted. We have a, we have a, an instrument. We have a, a, a bond, and that bond is an asset. And that's what it is, and that way. And I believe, Herb, I, I, I see where you're where you're coming from. I'm concerned about using money like that because if you take, let's say, uh, five hundred thousand dollars and use that next year, we have to come up with five hundred thousand dollars again to offset that. Or we have to have five hundred thousand dollars in cuts, and so you're chasing your tail on that one. So I, I I don't really agree with using fund balance to that degree to to offset a budget unless there's a, a, a specific thing like again 2015. 2015, there were extraordinary costs all over the place. And, the, and there was a lot of creative finance to, to do it, and there was a, a way of doing it to also offset what the, I think, 
and that's something I'm going to talk about later on, the public perception of, uh, of how bonding should be done. I think it's time for us to uh, strongly look at that. I'm just trying to explain I what I think. Yeah. We, we have a cost of $2 million, with $2 million a year in the soul, correct? It's 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 yes it's two point two of, of, of that's the off it's a three point three million dollar liability of which we are generating about one point something million dollars against that so we're constantly having to pay two point something million dollars to make up for the fact that this this solar fiasco never ever was going to make the money that they said it was going to make. Well, I just think that that funding should be used. For some of the projects to use like either in the capital or in the capital projects or into fund bonds. I think going forward, forward I think we probably will. Any further discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Bill DeGran. What wait, what are we voting? Yeah, what are we putting on? Let's <laughs> disregard the final adoption of the 2018 Social Security <coughs> budget approved. This final adoption of the 2018 budget. I just want to be sure. <laughs> yes. Freehilda Lazaro? Yes. Freehilda Patillo? Yes. Freehilda Director Rose? Yes. Freehilda Yardley? No. Final adoption ordinance number 18 03. At a regular meeting held on March 28, 2018, we introduced for first reading the following ordinance, which was advertised in the New Jersey Herald issue of March 30, 2018, together with a notice of public hearing stating that it would be held at this meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. Ordinance regarding capital improvements providing for improvements to the various county roads and bridges by in and for the county of Sussex, state of New Jersey, and appropriating $5,057,931 from the New Jersey Department of Transportation's fiscal year 2018 annual transportation program, ATP, county aid grants to pay for the cost thereof. May I have a motion that the public hearing be open? So move. Motion by Lazar. Second. Second by Graham. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any, all those opposed? The ayes have it, the floor is open to the public. Is anyone present to be heard regarding this ordinance? Please note, everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less and only address issues regarding this agenda item followed by a three minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print your name in the facility on the sign in sheet. Anyone? Anyone public session regarding the sign? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the hearing for the public? So moved. Motion by Patillo. Motion. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is closed to the public. Can I have a motion that this ordinance be finally adopted? So moved. Motion by Lazaro. Second by Graham. Discussion? Yeah, um, I just want to make a couple comments. Uh, I think this is one of the primary functions of, uh, uh, of county government is to make sure that our roads and bridges uh, are uh, uh, working. Uh, usable. I personally toured every bridge in the county that's been on the list for, for uh, uh, repair and they are in uh, horrendous shape. Uh, and so there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, it should be noted that we're not going to get to all of them, that this five million dollars is only part of what it costs to do a bridge. Uh, we do not get engineering costs from any state allocations that come. Those are extra. That means we have to provide engineering uh, either in-house or we have to hire engineering outside to come in and do uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the engineering for these, these bridges. Uh, you saw on the sheet up there on the scratch earlier the building of some bridges, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Roseland Bridge, uh, the Ogdensburg Bridge, uh, the Lafayette Bridge is now uh, in, in process to being done. Uh, these things are absolutely essential to the county, but they do not come without a cost because we do not get fully funded for these bridges and for these road improvements from the state. We get partial funding. We've got another 40% or more that we have to put in for that. That's all. Any further comments? Roll call, please. Brand? Yes. Freehilda Lazaro? Yes. Freehilda Vitillo? Yes. Freehilda Director Rose? Yes. Freehilda Yardley? Yes. Have a motion to authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance is finally adopted and also post seen on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative Center. Motion. Motion by Graham? Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. 
The motion passes. Final adoption, ordinance number 18-04. At a regular meeting held on March 28, 2018, we introduced for first reading the following ordinance, which was advertised in the New Jersey Herald issue of March 30, 2018, together with a notice of public hearing saying it would be held at this meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. Ordinance regarding bond ordinance providing for the various improvements to the science labs at Sussex County Technical School, located within the county of Sussex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $790,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $790,000 bonds or notes to the county of Sussex, State of New Jersey, for financing a portion of such appropriation. I have a motion to public hearing be open. Motion. Motion by Grant. Second. Second by Patil. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. Is anyone present to be heard regarding this ordinance? Please note, everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less and only address issues regarding agenda items followed, uh, this agenda item followed by a three-minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print your name, and municipality on the sign-in sheet. Anyone can speak regarding this ordinance? Seeing no one can have a motion to close the public, the Second. floor of the public. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is closed to the public. Can I have a motion that this ordinance be finally adopted? Second. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Freeholder Yardley? Yes. I have a motion to authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance is finally adopted and also post stamp on the Bolton Board in the lobby of the County Administrator's Center. Motion. Motion by Graham. Second. Mr. Patillo. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Public session from the floor. Please note, everyone is asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less and only address issues regarding agenda items followed by a three minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print your name, municipality on the sign sheet. We have a motion to open the public session. So mm -hmm. moved. Motion by uh, Lazaro. Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. And that gentleman speaking. Sir. Oh, yeah? Your turn. <laughs> I got a second chance. <laughs> Every do. All right. Every excellent. Week. Well, once again, Colin Carasquillo, I haven't changed. How are you guys? Uh, I'm here, as I say, representing the Nielsen Automotive Group. So you guys might know we have uh, the Franklin Sussex Auto Mall. We have Franklin Sussex Hyundai, Nielsen Ford, our newest acquisition, as well as three other dealerships down in southern New Jersey. So, the reason why I'm here is in support of Sussex County Community College, and I want to thank you guys for your forward-thinking mentality and the attitude on what occurred today. Uh, very eloquently stated, what you all said. I do want to tell you, what was you know, read off that paper is very true. There is a need for these middle skills and these individuals that have these skills. Now, I'm the digital marketing manager for the automotive group, so I'm the geek, right? I like my computers and all of that. So if you hand me a wrench or anything like that, I won't know what to do with it. But we're lucky that we have an outlet in Sussex County Community College and we have great guidance through the programs that Jason's put together. We actually now get students from the college that are part of the first, if you will, internship program through the university in partnership with the Nielsen Automotive Group where we have students who are going through their education in college, they have their book smarts, and they also get to apply what they've learned in the classroom at our dealerships. So they are shadowing our service advisors. They're at multiple locations. The beauty of this is after the program that we set up here, they have the opportunity for employment. And that's it, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, one, not only to strengthen our relationship with the community, but two, to give the, the future, I mean, the kids that are learning today, the future tomorrow, <laughs> essentially, right? The opportunities to have these employments or jobs here in your community, to keep them in Sussex County to keep them around the college that they, you know, they went to, around their families. The idea is we're building this community and the only way to do that is to give them these outlets where, yes, they can apply the best of both worlds, what they've learned in school and now apply it to the real world. We make these students go through interviews. We, we evaluate them, we make them punch in time cards. I mean, it is as legitimate as it can be as they are a full-time employee of ours. We have a great student who's gonna be offered a job at one of our stores. And I know that right now, and I just learned that today, so surprise. But the thing is, this is what we're looking to do to build this forward-thinking relationship as we move forward. And you see that you can't neglect the college. You can't neglect the future of tomorrow. What we need to do is we need to strengthen the future of tomorrow today. 
So that's all on here. I just want to show you guys that there is a need, that there is proof. It's not just written on paper. There are people that actually really strongly believe in this. So thank you. Now I'm just not going to shut up. <laughs> thank, you very much. thank you very much. Sir, what would, would you, you mind going down and checking out my Genesis? It's keep telling my phone somebody to bring Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what would you say to the, to the, uh, to some of the criticism that I heard uh, that working on cars is not a college level skill? I, I think ultimately, I mean, the deputy director stated it. You have, you have individuals and, and you have seen this transition where these skilled labor sets are more in demand. And what happened was people originally thought, oh, you know, I don't want to be a lube tech or I don't want to be a mechanic or I don't want to be, you know, I'm going to go be a digital marketing manager. I mean, let's use me as the example, honestly. I'll put, that's how it was. I said, I don't want to do those hard manual labor jobs. And it wasn't because I'm a millennial and I think, you know, I'm entitled to everything. It's, that just wasn't my career path. You have a lot of individuals, though, who want to do that, who enjoy getting their hands dirty, who like swinging a wrench, who like to do the ins and outs of working on automobiles, you know, whether it's moving forward with, with welding or these other programs that, you know, have been put in place that you guys want to support. That's fantastic. The criticism is going to be this, you know, is that really a way of the future? Are people really wanting to do this? Well, I'll tell you, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, the, the program has grown exponentially year over year. I think, what do you have now? You have about 50. 50 students, and what happened when you started? How many did you have? In the teens. In the teens? Okay, so that just goes to show you, over a period of time, you had students, teens, all right? Let's say, you know, I don't know, I'm gonna throw out a number, 15 students. You now have 50 students that are interested in this program. And that number's only grown, you know? And the beauty of it is, the Nielsen Automotive Group, I'm not just trying to do it, Oh, don't plug Nielsen, but the fact of the matter is this. We're growing too. Like I said, we just bought a Ford store up in Sussex, okay? We're not done yet. By the time we're done, we'll probably have six or seven more stores. What I'd love to do is roll this program out at all of those stores throughout New Jersey and give these students that opportunity to work at whatever it is, whether it's our Nielsen Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram dealership, whether it's the Ford store, whether it's the Hyundai store, whether it's our Chevrolet store. There's all these different skill sets and makes and models of vehicles that they can learn on. And to me, that is the most valuable experience that you will ever get, is that education. So, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, yeah. sir. I think the other thing that you need to note also is, is that the car of today is a lot different than a car of 1956. Oh, you're telling me. In my 56 Dodge, I could get out and pull the plugs out, clean them off with a matchbook cover, put them back in and speed off. Today, you open up the hood and go, right. where's the oil boost thing? <laughs> Um, it's, it's an unbelievable. Let me get my computer to look at it. Right. It's an incredible machine, and it's got all kinds of computer things that got to be hooked into it. And even if you know how to use it, you got to know how to read the diagnostics and get it. Right. Uh, it's, a it's, a, it's a whole new business. So, thank you once again. Thank you. I'm looking thank forward you, to really you know, sure. knocking this out of the park. So, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Anyone else in the public? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> Anyone else in the public? Can I get you something? Seeing no from the public, I have a motion to close the public session. Motion closed. Motion by Graham. Second. Second by Patil. <coughs> Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is closed to the public. When it comes to freeholder comments, I would please request the freeholders keep their comments to the absolute minimum. I got 20 pages. I can't do that. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> freeholder Yardley. Um, I just want to say that I did attend the hearing in Byron on Jason <coughs> PNL. Um, and I want to say that the, the men working out there from JCPL on the lines, they did a great job. I think uh, it was at OEM. But um, like I told the, the board there, and then and the freeholder, I, I have access to information. Um, but I just wanted to say that I used this phone, this there. Um, to get information, and it was wholly inaccurate from JCPNL from day one that your electric would be mm -hmm. on the evening. And I have to say that I lost the argument with my wife, and so I'm publicly yes. admitting she was right. And it wasn't going to be on. Um, and that was basically the comments, and the comments of my neighbors that called me, uh, telling me that JCPNL said, "Oh, I just called up." Mm -hmm. Electric can be on 11 o'clock. It was all over the place, and um, I hope that my testimony with other people have some impact. 
that they have a plan and they, from what I heard tonight, that they will be working with uh, our um, <coughs> emergency manager people, but the real issue is to have accurate information to those people that don't have access to the internet during a ma major outage. And so during a ma major outage, this is the 800 number they have. Hey, when's the electric on? And what I said was, I would have been very upset if they said to me, we have a major crisis on our hands and we are in the process of evaluating and should be prepared not to have electric for a week. I would have been upset, but it was a lot better than telling me it was coming on every day. And that's basically the testimony. So, um, and it was, uh, Interesting that they had the entire board there um, listening, uh, as well as all of the executives from J.P. Zena or Ohio, whatever the company is. Uh, that's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Yardley. Rigo Lazaro. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just eliminate all my comments. Thank you. Okay, you can thank me later. I just want to. Uh, I will thank you right now. So a little moment. I just want to let you know that that I will be taking I knew off. It was too good to be true. <laughs> I will be taking off the front end loader this week uh, and putting on the mower, uh, and so the snowblower is gone. Uh, we can do that. And up to date, we had storm 35, and we have spent thus far, so far, one million seven hundred ninety-five thousand two hundred sixty-six dollars solely on storm cleanup response. So that's the kind of thing that your tax dollars go to make sure that you can get in and out of your house and you can get to wherever you gotta get. Just be a little bit patient, wait till they get the road clear before you get out there and you'll have your car uh, at the end of the day. And you go out too early, you're gonna lose your car. Uh, <clears throat> so, the, and I once again wanna uh, commend the road department for the tremendous job they did uh, this this winter season, uh, they got hit quickly, and uh, some things were inaccurately portrayed as they often are. Uh, but they were on the ball, did a great job. Uh, you're going to start seeing uh, uh, a lot of projects coming into fruition today. Uh, there'll be a lot of paving going on. 519 is going to begin begin uh, any day now, and there is a whole slate of roads that are scheduled for repaving. Uh, be cautious, be careful, and give your road guys a break when you drive by. Uh, you can step on a brake and slow down a little bit so you don't knock somebody over. Um, and that's all I have for that. Thank you, Mr. Lebron. Here, Hilda Graham. Um, it's been five years this week that I've been a freeholder. I, I got to spend uh, almost seven years as a councilman before that. And it was always my intent to make sure that the taxpayers were treated the best that they could be. And you, you get here and you always wind up having to vote for things that you said, you know, I wish I didn't have to vote for or against that, but that's what you're here for. Um, I like to make a statement regarding bonds. Uh, the most difficult decisions that I had to make over the years had to do with what we were talking about before with uh, Mr. Serenelli regarding how money was shifted around in order to supplement something that was, in my opinion, was uh, the very edge of what was legal. I wish to introduce in the coming weeks a, uh, an ordinance resolution to ensure that bonding to back bonds for non-public projects like the solar build must go to public referendum. You would think that it wouldn't happen again after it's happened already, but, but it has already. Two times, two other times it's come to this board where somebody wanted to do a project that was a, a private project and they wanted to use public money to do it. And it's about time that something like that is blocked in its, its course. Um, the, with the, when we were approached, it was uh, for uh, more MCIA bonds for non-public, non-college technical, or MUA bonds. These are, these are bonds that were a private enterprise wanted to do something. They would come into us and they said, you back these bonds, you'll never have to pay anything. We'll pay for everything, and then at the end you'll own it. And, uh, and that's not how these things work out. The solar thing costs us, these bonds uh, have cost Sussex County approximately $33 million. It's gonna cost us $33 million over the course of the, the overall. And we're paying it back right now at a rate of about $3.3 million a year, of which we have some money that's coming in offsetting it. So over $2 million this year alone, I think it's $2.2 .2 million is going into this. This is reprehensible, it can't continue on. It's been done in other counties, we, we were heard 
we've even had a, a former freeholder come in here <coughs> very animatedly saying that uh, many other freeholders in other counties uh, thought it was okay. Well, other counties had other reasons for doing it. Sussex County got hit, hit hard, and it's not going away anytime soon. So when we look at our, our budget, our budget has that $2 million built in. Oh, that's over two, about 2% 2 of our budget is nothing more than paying off lawyers, engineers, and every other hanger on you can imagine who got their money years ago. And we, we have no recourse. Well, I think we do have a recourse, but that will be a, another topic probably in the, in the coming weeks. Um, so as I said, I'm going to be introducing a, uh, I'm, I'm going to pass it around so it, it has the right wording, but I want to introduce a resolution that stops that. I think that it's time that, our, that that type of bonding has to be stopped. I also want to make a comment on Murphy's one point, Governor Murphy's $1.6 billion tax increase that he announced today, which is even higher than he did before. Forty years ago, I was living in San Diego, California, and there was a, uh, a gentleman, very animated gentleman named uh, Jarvis, who, paid, who pushed an amendment called Proposition 13. And what it was is 1% of valuation with an annual cap of no more than 2%. I think it's time for a tax revolution in this county, in this, uh, in this state. And it really has to happen on the county level because the state has no control whatsoever over the money that they keep spending. We're stuck with unfunded mandates upon unfunded mandates. We have a 911 center that should be fully funded on the money that's paid in your taxes on these phones every single day. And yet, we don't see that money. Why don't we see that money? Well, if we put a lock on how much money can be brought out of property taxes, they're going to have no other choice in trend but to go the other way. I completely advocate that we go something in that direction. Um, I also was asked to comment on a resolution that's about to come up. There's a resolution coming up, which is 11C. This, okay, okay, all right. Uh, Would you like to discuss that during the... I, I will, but I want to just give a, a quick one on it. Well, I'll discuss it quickly in there. But the reason for this resolution, when it come up, and I'll discuss it a little more there, is that they've changed how billing is done for mental health services in the counties. And it's, it's part of the, the rolling of monies in, in other directions. And what they've done is they've turned a fee-for-service model. Now, a fee-for-service model is, makes sense. If you're gonna buy a certain amount of grapes, you pay for a certain amount of grapes. The problem is, is that we don't have mental health professionals in Sussex County. And because we don't have that, people don't set up shop here. It's very difficult for us to have that. So for us to have fee for service for a certain amount of customers means that other customers are just not even taken care of. We need to better address how this is being done. I was at an NJAC meeting and I did get support from other counties, but they were all rural counties. I, not out of all, like Morris County also. John Benani was, was uh, in fact, you were at that meeting. John Benani from Morris County was, was also affirmative towards it. Our issues, and, and Sylvia, you're going to touch on it a little bit today. Our issues in Sussex County with addiction, with the, the issues that we have crime, um, we have a president of our Board of Education in the room here about suspensions. Many of these stem from the early awareness of mental health issues. And if we don't have a way of addressing them, we can say that, that they're there. But if we don't have a way of addressing them, we can't solve them. We can't deal with them. And so this resolution, as it comes up, is the county requesting for a, a rethinking of how that uh, model is, is being deal, dealt with. Um, that's all I have to do. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Freeholder Deputy Director Patel. I wasn't here last week, so I'd like to thank Carol Moffitt, who's the Director of Human Services, and her entire staff for all the planning and organization and implementation of the first Human Services Forum. Uh, very well received, very well attended, and uh, it was a great success for us because we were able to get all the information out, give them a packet where they had it in front of them, there was information about all the services and contact numbers, asking them to please if you, if you have any need at all, just call us and let the county come in and handle it. Because with all the other vendors that we have available, we can meet almost every need uh, of our residents. So we're able to get that in their hands. Our next forum is gonna be on May 3rd. It's going to be a forum on mental illness and uh, it's gonna be held up at the Romano uh, Medical up there in the hospital. 
And um, this is going to be a smaller venue, but it's for mayors and council. So if anybody's interested, that's on the municipal level, we'd like to have it there. Again, we're going to talk about it, about our resources and how we can handle the situations that we're finding in Sussex County. And you know, there's so many people involved in this. There's always those that are at the front, but I am really grateful to those that are behind doing all the work because they are phenomenal in what they do. And they never get enough thanks. So tonight I'd like to publicly thank all of you. Um, and I would just like to thank Gregory Hoff and our finance staff and our accountants who just left for putting in a very good budget this year. Um, thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Ms. Patel. It's May 3rd. May 3rd. Uh -huh. And again, it's 8.30, right? 8.30 to 8 10. 8 a.m. 30 to 10. Possibly. Pray holders, please review consent agenda items A through D. The board chosen pray holders of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. If any interest, any freeholder would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Patilla, second by Graham. Discussion. I just, just want to, uh, one more time, to put emphasis on 11C, because we need to ensure access and quality of care of behavioral health services for the residents in need of treatment. And this particular fee-for-service model is very detrimental to Sussex County. Any further comments? I want to say one more thing um, that we're on that. Uh, we are fighting this. We went to see the senator today. Uh, we're pa passing this resolution as a start. We are going to fight this in Trenton. We're going to recommend to all the counties that they talk to the legislators. So when this issue comes up, which right now is perfect because it's budget season, that they will be able to have a knowledge of what the issues are in their own county. Um, some of the problems are when we call the state, they tell us how well everything is going. And we're trying to figure out you know, where is this coming from. So if we have the counties doing their job and pass, everybody passes the resolution, gets the legislators uh, educated, we think we can make a change here. We're going to try. Are there comments? Roll call, please. Freelder Graham. Yes. Freelder Lazaro. Yes. Freelder Patillo. Yes. Freelder Director Rose. Yes. Freelder Yardley. Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 28, 2018? Motion. Motion by Graham. Second. Second by uh, Lazaro. Discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Vitillo? Yes. Uh, Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Freeholder Yes. Can I have a motion? Uh, the motion passes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the executive session held on March 28, 2018? Motion by Graham, second by Lazaro. Discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Freeholder Yardley? Yes. No appointments and or resignations. Uh, Freeholders, please review resolutions 14A through 14G. Uh, when uh, satisfied, please make a motion to approve resolutions 14A through 14G. So moved. So motion by uh, Patillo, second by Graham. Discussion? Mr. Paul? <clears throat> yes, um, the various resolutions uh, that you see uh, A through B <coughs> uh, have to do with uh, the temporary closures of county roads. Uh, resolution F uh, is the declaration of surplus property from the sheriff's office, the office of the uh, fire marshal, <coughs> and declared surplus. And, um, also, then you have the resolution that seeks the reinstatement of uh, federal impact aid funding. Thank you, Mr. Bach. Any further comments? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The motions pass. 15 awards of contract, change orders, and bids. Uh, freeholders, please review 15A1. Just make a correction on resolution one. That the laundry services are for the county of Sussex, not the country. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in order to do that, let's just uh, let's let's do it's a spelling. It's a typo. Let's just do it. Just <coughs> clear though. Uh, word of contracts 
A1, resolution regarding award of contract for uniform supply and laundry services for the County of Sussex to American Wear Inc. in the approximate amount of $44,640 from data contract award until December 31st, 2018. I have a motion to approve that award of contract. So moved. Motion by Patilla, second. second by Yardley. Discussion? Roll call, please. Brihilda Graham? Yes. Brihilda Lazaro? Yes. Brihilda Patilla? Yes. Brihilda Director Rose? Yes. New York. Yeah, motion. Uh, resolution passes. Uh, Freeholders, please review uh, 15A2 through 15A4. And if so desired, please make a motion to approve 15A2 through motion. 15A4. Motion by Graham. Second. Second by Patilla. Uh, Discussion. <coughs> Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. Freeholder Director. Yes. 16 Financial. Uh, 16A Resolution regarding payment of bills. List A. I have a motion to pay no this bill. Second. Uh, motion by Lazaro. Second by Graham. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. 16. You have a good 16. Yes, abstain. Yes. U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. um, Freeholder Director Rose. Abstain. And uh, Freeholder Yardley. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Resolution regarding payment of bills, list B. Could I have a motion to pay those bills? Motion. Motion Second. by Graham. Second by Lozano. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lozaro. Yes. Freeholder Patello. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. And Freeholder Yardley. Yes. 17 Personnel Division of Library Services. Freeholders, please review 17A through 17E. So moved. Um, do we need, does this need to be approved? These are administrative, aren't they? Yeah. Does this need to be approved or is it for informational purposes only? It's for information. Okay. Freeholders, please review 7 and public, please review personnel 17A through 17E. Mr. Poff, administrative report? Uh, no further report, freeholder director. Thank you. <laughs> Graham took your time. <laughs> the question is, is uh, council going to follow? County council? Nothing to report. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is time heroes of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Any unfinished business? Any new business? Public session from the floor. Please note, everyone is asked to keep the comments for five minutes or less, followed by a three minute response time from the free order board. Please state your name, print name, and this ballot on sign in sheet. I have a motion to open, open the meeting to the public. Motion by Patillo, second by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. Anyone from the public? Just state your name. I'm Karen Robert. I am Sussex County's Administrator of Health and Human Services. I just wanted to take a moment and recognize all the people that were here in support of the fee for service mm -hmm. uh, resolution and to thank the board for passing that because it really is very, very important that we keep those services that we have here in the county. So thank you and thank everybody for coming out. Could you point out who, who they are that? Sure, maybe they can stand and say where they're from. Hi, I'm Michelle Borden. I'm from Newbridge Services, and we have a counseling office in Sparta. <coughs> Diane Pugh, is that? I'm from Newton. I work with Bridgeway Rehab Services in the Township. We provide mental health services in the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmine Dio, I'm from Community Hope. Uh, we also provide mental health services here in the county, and uh, thank you very much for passing the resolution. Sure. I'm Jerry Doherty. I'm with NAMI Sussex, and I thank you for bringing attention to this very important issue. Cindy. Cindy Armstrong, Sussex County Mental Health Administrator. Oh, Christine Florio. Yes, thank you. Um, We've spent a lot of time talking to the agencies. Um, we work very well together, and um, there's definitely a lot of concerns across the state for survival of some of these mental health agencies and to keep um, these important services in place for people who really need them. So thank you for taking the lead on this. Well, thank you for all that you do 
the pristine Salita. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, thank you for your dedication and your time. I, I, I've come here on those meetings on the, during the afternoon. And um, everybody here is very dedicated. I do want to point out uh, Cindy Armstrong, who is the unsung hero, because she's very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Seeing no one from the public, I have a motion to close the public session. So mm -hmm. moved. Motion by Lazar. Second. Second by Matilla. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have the floor is closed to the public. And we will skip the reminders. 24 adjournment. I have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second by Matilla. Second by Graham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.